Auto. Back at it. Ah, uh, you know what? Allied wheat, probably both. Just gonna switch back and forth. I'm doing little batches. But I'm also, uh... Gonna do all the one color. I'm gonna do batch of four. You know what? No, I'm not doing batches. I'm doing conveyor style. They will be done today. What league? Ah, most likely gonna be playing them as Greater Thurian. I do, I do want to play. Um, I do want to play them as Ymir, Ymir, the Ymir conglomerate. Uh, it is twelve thirty six my time. PM. I think I need to get one more light in here. It was kind of dark from this angle. Yeah, I'm sure Colin's fine. He uh, he runs his own business. It's his business, so it keeps him busy, right? Oh yeah, yeah, I got plenty of time. As long as I get to bed before midnight. We got a little under 12 hours to get these done. It shouldn't take me anywhere near that, to be honest with you. No, I'm just doing them as metal. Um, I'm just doing this because there's only so much, so much time in a day. Whew. Um, a little under the weather. They got a really runny nose. Do I try to keep that part off camera? The contrast has made this job relatively easy.
Um, what do you mean? Can you show them? Like, uh, I, I just I'm doing the clock parts at the moment. So the, the other parts were just um. Interesting. It's fine. The other parts are just uh, one or two layers of uh, Agro's Dunes. And the cloth is getting one layer of Croxigor uh, scales. Both are very rich. Colors that don't require a second coat. Now, if these are bigger panels, I would highlight them. Whoops. Uh, I'm going to leave the mistake alone. If these were bigger panels, they would get more highlighting and shading. But they're tiny, tiny little sections so that these areas are, will only get um, one layer of contrast. But like uh, on the cloaks on these guys, it, it started off as uh, the same Croxor scales, but I add more shadow and depth and uh, highlights. But I use, um, I use a blue to highlight typically. Is it? My paint station is a bit of a mess. I put it away already. Welcome back, Todd. Hey, Steve. Feeling uh, better? Actually, yeah. Uh, um, I used Sotech Green and um, Thousand Suns Blue to play around with highlights for this contrast. I actually probably could use one more edge highlight of Temple Guard Blue. In fact, I might do that actually. If I get when I get all these guys done. But the, the cloth on the, the infantry, the the um the troop choices here, they're not gonna get any kind of highlighting or uh shading at all. Like one layer contrast for them. Are they all contrast? Uh no. Well uh so how I how I'm doing these guys is I've I primed them a dark gray. I've then airbrushed them a light gray called Ulthuan gray. And uh then I put contrast directly over that. Like uh the leather is just contrast. It's two layers of this. And then it gets slight uh edge highlights and certain folds get a bit of a highlight of Xandri dust. But that's because they're like big panels that are like the eyes never really see those areas. But for like one of these guys, their leather and their cloth, it's so tiny and so small that they get just one layer of contrast and that's all they're going to get. Now the white, the white, once they get all the contrast done, we'll have to get into uh, shading and highlighting. That's after I get all this contrast done. Yeah, so previously, before contrast came out, even these small areas of cloth, I would have painted them one solid color, given them a, a shade or an ink wash, and then a highlight, whereas contrast takes away all that all those steps. You don't need to do all those steps anymore. I think it's a fantastic tool. I'm a huge champion for for contrast paints. They don't replace everything you have to do. But they do a lot. I just got contrast. I don't want it. Oh, good boss. That was a fantastic nap. No. I've also learned recently that contrast and oil washes go hand in hand. You can really do some nice things by mixing those. 
Is it weird how I'm subbed to your channel on YouTube on my phone has to subscribe again on the people? Oh, really? That's not ideal for me. <laughs> hey, everybody, check you subscribed. These guys next. Yeah, Michael, uh, Michael, Michael, I don't say your name, but yeah, uh, you're not the first person to say something like that. They do kind of look like StarCraft minis. I like the dome helmets that really give them that StarCraft feel. However, I am going to put all the, uh, I am going to put all the dwarven flesh heads on. I'm gonna do that afterwards because contrast for flesh tones. Oh, I love it. This gun strap was missed. Candace, there's going to be no stream tonight. Well, let me rephrase. There's going to be a stream tonight, but it's going to be a painting stream. <laughs> That's cool. The book of Judges. Drewski, how's it going, buddy? Next. Okay. Does anybody got a cool runny nose remedy? It won't stop. They're free. I don't think I get them to fit. My nostrils aren't that big. <laughs> How would you do Beastman with Contrast? I actually did. I actually did a fair number of my Beastman with Contrast. Almost all, all of my infantry were done with uh, a Contrast. To a degree. Um, all the big monsters, I use the airbrush because on a big flat surface, an airbrush just works better. But for Contrast on my infantry. Now, if you look at my Beastman, unfortunately, they're at the studio. They're not at my house. So I can't, like... Throw them one at a time with you, but um, I, I, I took a unit of like twenty or thirty guys and I grouped them into three or four different groups and then painted them because I, I like varying uh, flesh tones and fur colors on my beastmen to keep them more of like a ragtag rabble instead of the uniform look. Helps make them feel more feral instead of uh, like a uniformed army. But like for example, my um, my ungors, I take a. Um, uh, flesh tone contrast, like uh, most commonly uh, one I use is Gillum and Flesh, but it's not the only one I use for the young gores. So, so for example, I would I would I would wash the entire model, not wash. I would apply a Gillum and Flesh over the entire model, and then and it's true. It's just a part two legend. I'm not getting a Discord notification, actually. Is, it, is there a Discord notification going out? Anyways, I get distracted. Yeah, I, I put um, Gilliman Flesh over the entire model, and then over the leathers, 
right over top the Gilliman Flesh. I'll do a Snake Bite Letter or an Agro's Dunes. I kind of mix those up. That's one of them I use. Right over top the Gilliman Flesh. And then over the fur parts that already have Gilliman Flesh, I go over top that with like Gore Grunt, Gore Grunta fur contrast paint. So I just basically layer my contrast paints. And then when that's all done, I, I use uh, Gray Sear to rebase all the, the, like the, the teeth and claws and horns. And then um, I give the horns um, skill. Oh, what's it called? The, the skeleton contrast paint. Skeleton, skeleton, skeleton horn. horn. Yeah, that's the one. Um, that's it. Like my, my beastmen are almost, almost exclusively contrast. The red, the red cloth and shield coverings are, are contrast. Yeah, I think my beastmen, my beastmen infantry are almost exclusively contrast. And I think they look pretty good. Hey, Falcon Bunch, don't worry. People come and go from from channels or the hobby. The most common thing with uh, miniature wargaming is people do it for a few months, then they stop for a few months, they come back for a few months, and they're gone for a year, and they're back for three. And Yeah, it's a very common thing, my dude. Don't worry, I remember you. Pretty good. Having a hard time studying what to do hobby-wise. Star Wars, AOS, 40K, 30K, Conquest way too much dude i just played my first game of star wars legion i think it's freaking fantastic aos has some of the best models 40k i mean i don't think i'm a fair person to judge it i play it too regularly it's like i, I play it all the, like all the time um but right now i am having crazy fun with 30k um warhammer fantasy and Star Wars Legion. Now, Conquest, I know. I, I want you guys to get... I want you to do Conquest, actually. Focus on Conquest and let me know what you feel about it. I can get back into that one. What if I just paint like this? This could work. The only problem when I put my head down. I think my brain's leaking. <laughs> yeah, if you're doing... If you're doing a lot of neutral and flesh tones and browns, what's that? Earth tones, neutrals and earth tones. If you if you just think about going from light to dark, you can just layer your contrast on top of each other. Saves a crap ton of time. I think my my beastmen, um, they look good. They look like I know what I'm doing. And it's just a guy throwing contrast on a model. Most of them were primed with Gracier. I most often use Gracier as the primer. Um, but some of them are done with the the, the bone one. Do I need a cheeseburger? I did I did um I did bring a quest bar in the room. Thinking I probably should eat it. But maybe I'll just order a cheeseburger. I'm th honestly spoons uh, I, I think I think it, I feel like it's stopping. If it if it kicks up again, I'm going to. I don't care how weird it looks, but I'm going to. Well, I hope you're out of it for now. I feel like a bunch of they come and go. Things get better. 30k so much fun. Still needs an epic. Oh yeah, it needs an epic huge. So so I have not been able to successfully use contrast on a marine i think it looks too splotchy but of the new contrasts i haven't i've heard good things even over like big flat surfaces like marines so i want to try like one of the yellows over a marine to see how they are But I always found Space Marines to be a relatively 
easy thing to paint even without airbrush the way i used to paint space marines if i, if I wasn't going to use an airbrush is whichever color my chapter is let's say i'm doing blood angels i'll just cover the whole model with one color of red and when it dries i'll cover the whole model with null and oil and when that dries i repaint the inside of the panels just with the first red color that's it and that always looked really good without effort or not that it's not, not, not that it's not effort without um technical expertise or know-how no technique there dang it i keep getting Going to be going to be going to get a friend and their kid in the AOS. Planning to send them scaven some of that starter boxes. That's that's what you got to do. Uh, I found the best way to get people into the hobby is if you can afford it, just give them their first bunch of miniatures. Well, like it's it's an expensive hobby. You can get them. I'm gonna make I was gonna make a distasteful joke, but you gotta just gonna give them a taste, right? Get them hooked. What paint is that? This is Croxigor scale. This is the kind of the color it's gonna put out. Hey Steve, when you apply your contrast, do you use water or anything to no, mute them or anything? Just right out of the bottle. Typically no. The only time um the only time so far that I have uh, done, like I messed around the contrast is there are, there are actually two instances. One, um, I really love Wildwood, and sometimes for what purposes I want to do with it, I mix a little bit of contrast medium with it. I, I actually use it more uh, straight out of the pot than with contrast medium, but sometimes when I use Wildwood, I add contrast medium. And then uh, during uh, the COVID, when I was like stuck, we're all stuck at home and I'm, I'm working from home and they're like, make painting videos. I'm like, I don't want to do that. Um, I made a video about um, um, trying to replicate somebody else's work. So I brought home like three Croxigore that the studio owned. And I like, cause it was, I found a box of them. So I was like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna paint three more to match the, uh, the three the studio had. And I started playing around with contrast to, to get the right, cause you have to, I had to mix a lot of colors to get what the guy was doing. But I don't know if any of this made it to the final cut. I don't think I, think I might have edited it all out. I tried to play around with a lot of contrast where I was mixing them, trying to create the color and contrast does not mix. Like, um, I'm trying to make, I'm trying to make, I actually was trying to make this color, believe it or not. This, this doesn't exist. I'm trying to make a, a greeny blue teal, right? So I'm taking yeah. blue contrast and green contrast. And no matter, no matter how much blue in the mix, it was always the same color green. Like a single dot of green changed the entire pool. Like I couldn't, I couldn't blend contrasts to make a different color. It wouldn't work. Mm -hmm. I think they, I think none of that made it to the final cut. That's my only other time I was trying to mesh around or mixing contrast. I think contrast just, just don't mix with anything. Or like, I think, well, I'm gonna rephrase that. I think they are, they are designed out of the pot to be used out of the pot. And they do a good job of that. Yeah. Spoons, same, same, my dude. I think it's a more and more common thing these days. Yeah, so you wonder if one of the newer greens would work. I haven't, so. This is the box Games Workshop sent to Mini Wargaming with the contrast. I still have them all in here. Now, as I as I use them, they end up in a different box. So this is all the stuff I haven't had a chance to play around with yet. But like this Iron Draws Yellow, I think would probably go... Ah, it doesn't matter. Oh, there's a new Shade! 
Cargor Rage Shade? I didn't even realize it was a thing. You didn't? It's all the rage. Is it any good? I have no idea. I was just making a bad joke. Bro, don't mess with me. I haven't bought any of the new paints. Hey, they sent another contrast medium. That's sweet. So, um... Because I got, a, I got a new, I got a new batch of all the shades, right? All the shades, the new ones, like the new Agrax first shade, the new Nolan Oil, they to me feel they work closer to the inks of old. Really? Yeah, yeah. They really, they, they taint, they really taint. Uh, they don't, they don't, they don't. So they don't shade as much. They actually create the contrast it's like a super pale contrast not pale you know what i can't use my words to describe this um they don't what's the word they're, they're a little more viscous they, they stick more okay yep so they, they create that tinting they tint right. more they tint more there you go islander did not hold up jedi bias you lie hj i think i think i'm doing okay Wait, Jeff, are you are you are you the dude? <laughs> Did we ever tell you the story, Todd, about the guy we went to the, the the diner with, who was kind of disgusted with us for what we were eating? No. Oh, because he's in chat right now. I think <laughs> you're the same dude, right? Um. So years ago, uh, we have a guest in a mini war gaming, and we go to get lunch, and we go to this diner up the road with those like all day breakfast. It is him. It's okay. So, um, I think I think I, you were playing. Uh, we played like Space Marines versus Necrons. I think at the time. This is the old building. This is years ago. We go to the, the diner, get breakfast, and we all order the Hungry Man. It's it's two plates of food, um, and we all kind of like a joke of like who can eat it the fastest. And this British guy orders a like tomato sandwich. It's two pieces of white bread and some tomatoes. And we're like, <laughs> okay, so he's his, his little appetizer. He hasn't ready to order his meal yet. He was just as disgusted with us with all the food we were eating. And at, at this and we were all done before he finished his tiny sandwich. <laughs> and then oh, sorry, and then he was in the studio. Uh it was last week, right? And I walk in I'm like, oh yep, yeah, remember you. I remember that face of uh, disdain and disgust. When I do my space rooms, you do gray dry brush white and water on the contrast paints. I haven't watered down contrast. Do you find it does it not does it break it down? Does it affect it at all? Actually, there was a video, I think it was actually from Duncan, where he was doing demon head flesh with one of the purple or pink contrasts, heavily just light snack, <laughs> heavily watered down. I haven't I haven't done it yet. This is what I heard. I would make my own washes, I think. I, I think they work fine. Um, I, I, I've been just, um, like watering my washes down a little bit. But um, I, I have recently just, I just purchased a bunch of stuff to make my own washes. Washes. Wash. Because for the more time train I'm working on, I don't want to spend several hundred dollars on just wash. I just bought this stuff to make my own. How, how does Highlander not hold up? Did you watch it? The acting, okay, hold on. The acting is terrible. The, the the Spanish guy, the Spanish guy who was born in Egypt has a thick Scottish accent. The Scottish guy in the movie has a thick French accent. The action is terrible. The movie's terrible. I mean, I loved it. I love it, but it does not hold up. And Steve, I think you need to have a little longer nap. Um, no, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I actually just rewatched it. Did, did, have you re? Have you? Oh, this is Highlander, the first one. Have you? Have you rewatched it recently? I haven't seen it in exactly, years. exactly. It's an amazing movie, except you watch it in twenty twenty two. But it's, it's like, Sean like literally, no, because as a kid, I didn't pick up on it, right? The Highlander, the Scottish guy, um, thick French accent, did not notice it when I was a kid. Now the Highlander has a thick French accent, and then he meets uh, Ramus, who is a Spanish guy. However, he's born in Egypt, and he's got the thickest Scottish accent. Like, nothing makes sense. And the action was terrible. 
I heard they were making Highlander. I could get behind that. I could get behind that. Do they really need to remake another film? Is your are you eating your mic? Eat me. What's happened to your audio, my dude? I can't hear you. I heard they were making Highlander. My friends and I agreed we would only see if Nicholas. I watch. I watch Nicholas Cage Highlander. Can you hear me, Mike Chick? Uh, yeah, you don't sound right. You sound um, like your mic costs sixty-five cents now. All right, give me a minute. Yeah, you need to do some audio work. You warp. You work perfectly, Chris. Henry Cavill is cast for the remake of Highlander. Is that actually true? Don't mess with me. I I, I would love that. No, I get so much. Me- Ooh. I'm Googling this. You better not be lying to me. Mic check? Yeah, you sound good. Okay. I just needed to reset. Really what it was is I had to... I, I swallowed my mic in shock as you said that Highlander was bad. So I was... This is, this is a thing! Superman's going to be the Highlander! I'm excited. Wait, what? I'm, it's, it's real. It's real. There is still good in the world. Everything's gonna be okay. Henry Cavill can do no wrong. Except for, uh, what was that stupid movie called? The Man from Uncle. He did some wrong there. You didn't like The Man from Uncle? You liked it? I didn't not like it. <laughs> it was a thing, to be honest. Oh my goodness. Ah, uh, he's still only rumored. Only rumored? No, he's don't still only it. rumored. I'm sorry. No, we can. I'm an IMDb. player. We can will this into existence. I believe it. To be IMDb true. says rumor. No, I believe it to be true, so it will come to pass. I believe in the secret. He needs to play the Emperor of Mankind. I've heard so many people say that. He can be the Emperor. Cavill said himself on a TV show? All right. So it's going to be a thing. See? I willed it. I willed it into existence. You're welcome, everybody. He he better not be crapping out on on, uh, uh, The Witcher, then. That's all I'm going to say. I'm okay with ending The Witcher. Like, I think The Witcher's fantastic. But I've seen it now, so... Well, that's what I mean. Like, it, it's a good series, so I don't want him to, you know, not be doing Witcher because of this. Okay, so would you rather season three of The Witcher, or okay. if, if, if this is an or situation, you can't you can't have yeah, both? Yeah. So season okay. three of The Witcher or one season of Highlander with Henry Cavill? You can't do both. Oh, it's a season. It's not a movie. It's a TV that show. You're gonna make it. It's a TV show. Okay. Which one? Which season one? Season three. Do? Season three, we've already got an established plot line. Oh, okay. I, I respect it. I, I disagree. But I respect it. Here we are. No, we're not doing that. No, they've already done season three. Okay, cool. Oh, they really? Okay, so season four. <laughs> <laughs> All right, now um, I'm going to say season one. So three's enough. Okay, gotcha. Three will tide me over for a while. Oh, who the hell am I kidding? Hey, man, I, I ever, binge watched this too. We like only ever weekend. had one season of uh, Firefly, and hey, it was enough. No, it wasn't. No, that show was so good. You wiped that filth out of your mouth, it was, man. Oh, that show was so good. It is so good. I have people in my office that are like, hey, I checked out this one new science fiction show. It's called Firefly. I'm like, yeah, that's like 15, 20 years old. I remember I remember like watching on television like the um the promotion for it. I'm like coming soon on Fox. I'm like, that Cowboys in Space? Hell yeah. Yep. Yeah. waiting for the second movie the movie that will never come 
What do you mean? Well, they had okay. So season the series of Firefly existed and then didn't exist, right? And it became a cult classic. Yep. There's so not, then they did a film. There's not going right? to be another did, movie. Well, they were talking that they might make a second film, depending on how their gate and how their uh, revenues did from the film. But I guess it wasn't enough for them to do a second one because they were going to explore a whole bunch of stuff in these films, all the stuff they wanted to do in the series. Yeah, but I'm not going to watch it with a wash. That's fair. I, I disagree, but that's fair. Uh, you need Mal. Forget wash. You need them all. Yeah, okay, you do. Uh, no, I can do it without Simon. I think he's important. But he is the nagging voice of conscience and the ragtag band of, you know, cowboys that... Yeah, a necessary plot device. No. I think the show is significantly less without him. It is. (laughs) See, I'm a leaf on the wind. We can have a series, but let's go back to Jamestown. That's true. Hey, I got a, I got a question for you. I'm a man How do you answers. clean your spears? How do I what? How do you clean a spear? In the gut of the enemy? Run it through the wash. Ah, ha, oh. <laughs> There's a space spear. Yeah, well, I didn't, I didn't qualify what kind of spear. Whew. Is this the official paint scheme from the Codex? Uh, not really. What is the official paint scheme? So, the stuff in the book, the official paint scheme, um, the, the, it's close actually. Except for the armor plates would have a little more of a green tint to it, and the pants would be a little a little more saturated. Sorry, sorry, a little more desaturated, a little more grayish, with a, like a hint of blue. And then like these guys here would have their armor plates like this green color that's on this bike. Mm. So it's close. Like, if people were to guess what this is supposed to be, they would guess Greater Thurian. It's going to have to be, like, one from the book, right? Close enough for me. How many points am I painting? Uh, 1,250. I was able to make 1,250 or 1,300 points-ish in that neighborhood from the two box sets. So are these two um, launch boxes in? Yeah. Or is it a launch box and, like, a few of the other ones? It's two launch boxes. That's why there's literally two of everything. There's two bike units, two of the call characters, two of the iron here characters, and then four units of the troops. I remember and they're, I'm assuming they're full kits in there, right? Yep. Yep. No, these aren't staff fit. These are... I remember, the villain in Highlander was meant to be Russian by the end. Uh, yeah, it's true. It's true. I didn't know that until I re it recently. I have to say this, when I discover that Cavill was on was on 40k, I envision him as a series as a Commissar Caiaphas Kane. Uh he can be any he can be any of the Prime Mark as far as I'm concerned. Not Perturabo. It's not, he's not silly enough to be Perturabo. Oh, he can't be Logar either. He's not wussy. Can't enough. be Vulcan. Why not? Vulcan's black. You Vulcan is that that uh, um, charcoal, the, whatever they call it. You could you could paint Cavill's skin <laughs> to be the charcoal black with red eyes, and it's not blackface. True, but you could get somebody else to do Vulcan. 
Yeah, I'm just okay. He also fine, doesn't fine. have the size you know, for him, and I know I you can see, CGI. He probably wouldn't make a good Vulcan. My point yeah. is, he could play most of them. <laughs> you play most of them. Yeah, could you see him as, like, Horus? Oh, yeah. That's the, the frightening part. Do the troops have the same silly weapon restrictions as Plague Marines have? I don't know what that means, Cap Bond. I think he would be great as a lion. I think he would be the lion. Oh, no, no, no. He could be Russ. He'd be a better Russ. Be a way better Russ. Yeah. But he do? He's I more think... honorable than the lion, so. By default. Uh, the lion had more honor than Russ. Uh, he stabbed Russ in the back. I'm just saying. Russ has the history of sucker punching people. So two wrongs make a right? In my books. <laughs> Is Sanguinius or Dorn? Dorn more than Sanguinius. I, I can see him Sanguinius or Dorn. I want when they cast this amazing movie, I want John Barenthal to be Puerto Rabo. Why? I think I think uh You think he could pull it off the I best? I think he can pull off the anger. The the anger without the rage of Angron. Fair. I, I have I, I think I think, think John Barenthal's uh just a fantastic actor actually. Oh, J Khan, super easy. Uh Ken Wantanabe, is how you pronounce the name, I think? Ken Watanabe? Yeah. Watanabe? Watan Watan yeah. Watanabe? Yeah, that dude. From The Last Samurai, right? Yeah, I love that dude. I love that dude. 100%. Slam dunk. Can you pull off a Korax? Well, anybody can be mopey and emo. And I oh, play Raven Guard in 40k. We're, we're having Kobe Maguire play Korax. Uh, we cannot be associated with anymore, Steve. I'm casting it. Nope. Nope. <laughs> Please, God, are no. Gonna, are you going to hardline the Maguire? <laughs> Please, God, no. Because all I can think of as soon as you say that is Spider-Man 3. <laughs> I know. Uh, I would pick... Um, Mark Strong's too old now, but he would be my horse. Actually, a lot of people I've seen have chosen uh, The Rock for a horse. No, The Rock wouldn't be anybody. I, I, I don't Don't get me wrong. I like The Rock, and I like most of his movies. But, like, he's not a good actor. He's a bad actor. But Mark he's, Strong he's, could pull off make... Horace. Mark Strong, he he's going to be, for me, Horace, Malkador, or Erebus. Yeah, Erebus. Definitely Erebus. No, no. Mark Strong as Malkador and Jeremy Irons as Erebus. No, or Jeremy Irons. No, be Jeremy Corfaron. Irons is Malkador. Jeremy Irons is Malkador. Hold on, that's not. Are you sure? Malkador you sure? or Carrion? No, he could. He could be Corfaron. You're right. Even better. Oh, Paul, who's Fulgrim? Damn, who's Fulgrim? Um, Damn. Um, who would? We are probably the first ever people to discuss this. I think ever. I don't think anybody's ever done this before. Make a really good Fulgrim. Who would make a good Fulgrim? Oh, you know who could? Who could make a good Fulgrim? Sean Bean? No, he's playing Ferris Menace. Stupid. <laughs> no, 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 no. He's Sanguinius. <laughs> if you're going to die, get beat to snot. <laughs> No, Ooh, Matt uh, I'm gonna Smith make, would do. I'm gonna, I'm gonna vote for uh, Bautista Zangron again. I like I like Drax, but Bautista's a terrible actor. <laughs> Angron, oh. Angron needs a good actor. Angron does. Like I think maybe John Barrel. Uh, John Barrel doesn't have the right look for me, but I think he could do it. Okay, Josh Brolin gets to be uh, Horace. Ooh, we can get behind that.
No, no, he's the emperor. No, he's Tom the Holland or Josh Brolin. Brolin, Brolin is the emperor. Brolin is the emperor. Okay. Oh, Ron Perlman could have done Angron. Ron Perlman is Angron. Ron Perlman could. He's too old now. But Ron Perlman could have been Angron. The CGI is a wonderful thing. I know. We had to do the way, the way back machine. Yeah. Josh Brolin also could be Dorn, but I think you're wasting a good actor on a boring character. Matt Smith definitely would be the uh, the choice for Fulgrim. Who? Uh, he was one of the doctors from Doctor Who. Don't watch plays that show. Damon Targaryen. Uh, he was in The Crown. Here, I'll just take his picture. I'll just upload that to the general post. Johnny Depp is Kurz, eh? I feel like I feel like Kurz is another one that needs. There, that's Matt Smith. He's in general. He's in general. Yeah. Oh, he, I can see him as Kurz. Who do you want him as? They're saying him as Fulgrim. Nah. Curse. I think it looks Cumberbatch like... actually could do a better curse. True. 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 I can give you any of the... Okay, here's the, here's the thing. Here's the most... Christian Bale could be cursed too, actually, yeah. yeah. Okay, here's the more important one. Let's try this a different way. There's an actor... Chuck Norris is anyone, anyway, obviously. Uh, no, Chuck, Chuck Norris is, is the Amber. warp. He's the warp. Oh, he is. Yeah, Chuck oh, he's Norris Cabanda. is the warp. Um... Okay, yeah, it's good. So there's an actor I want to get in here, but I don't know where to put him. In in my movie of the Horse Heresy, my HBO uh, series that I'm going to pitch to them and write, it's uh, it, it, chapter one is uh, War Breaks Out, chapter two is Action. Okay, so who are you talking I got to get Paul Giamatti in here, but I don't know where. You don't know where to put Paul Giamatti? Yeah. Nathaniel Garrow. No, 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 you don't no. Don't think no, so? No. A uh, Tom Ellis is your Conrad curse. Who's Tom Ellis? Uh, did you that. ever watch the show Lucifer? Yep. Okay. Oh, okay. He was the devil. Okay, yeah, yeah, he could do it. Yeah. But hold on, we're not we're not Keanu Reeves is anybody, obviously. Yeah. I make him the emperor. Counter Reeves. Well, the emperor's now had four different. I know, right? Guys, right? <gasps> Luke Evans, best. No, Luke Evans is cursed for me. So that's the, no, no, no. no. Luke the Evans is Corvus Corax. Mm, I can I can, I can accept it, but I like him as cursed right now. But hold yeah, on, you take him Guys, as you take oh, him we, as Corax. We we have to figure out Paul take... Giamatti though. If not, I'm just gonna make him Puerto Rabo. You could take Paul Giamatti. Like, okay, he doesn't really work as a Primarch. No, I know. But I, he I, certainly I agree. Works. What about his Typhus? Thank you, thank you. Now Typhus will be inter like he'll be the main actor of my series, though. It'll be this, this, the show will now be centered around Typhus. Or, or we could do Paul Giamatti as Erebus. We don't have Erebus yet. Could he be Erebus? I think he could. Yeah. I, I, Jedi Boss, I don't think... I, I'll leave me some Chris Evans, but I don't think he fits here. I don't think he fits no. with anybody. He can be, he can be Ultramarine Sergeant, that guy, but... Dr. He Dr. could Stewart. be Theo. Patrick Stewart is Malkador, actually. I need a young pack, yeah. younger Pactor Studio as Mokador. Yeah, I'll give you that. Yes, Christopher Walken is Malakurst. Sure. Does Jackman need to be here? I don't know if he fits. Sure he does. Where, where, where does he fit? He is Space Wolf Legionary number 27589. Sure, yep. Yeah, I, I, I want Hugh Jackman and Chris Evans as like two space that keep taking their helmet off in the background. Yeah. We gotta put pretty in there for sure. 
Martin Freeman, the random solar jewelry dude. No, I still I'd make him also Space Marine. <laughs> yeah. Charles Dance. Charles Dance, oh, that God. who's that? It sounds so familiar. Who's Charles Dance? Uh he's the He's the leader of the the Lannisters. He's Tywin Lannister. Sure. Oh, he's, he's the old guy that gets shot while he's taking a crap. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Would, is he, is Charles Dance a better Melkador than Patrick Stewart? Yes. Yeah. Yes, he is. Yeah. And that's saying something. RDJ doesn't belong. Yeah, there's nowhere a Robert Downey fits here. Like, yeah, I, I think he's sorry. really good at playing RDJ, but that's all he plays. <laughs> Saul Goodman, uh, what's his name? I forget his name. I don't think he fits here either, though. Bob Odenkirk, yes. Tom Cruise is pretty. No, nah, Tom Cruise also doesn't fit. And I think he's got, I think he would be cost too much to put in the background of my movie as a Space Marine takes helmet off. Tom Hardy, yeah, uh, all fairies and Omega. Tom Hardy can be, know. yes, yeah, he can be, yeah, absolutely. He can be, he gets to play every Elf, Elf Legionnaire as well. I think he can do Angron. Tom, Tom Hardy can do Angron. But here's the thing, Tom, I thought we had... Tom Hardy's one of those actors that can... Like, too many of these actors can be too many of these things. We need somebody to just start documenting. Get painting, Steve. You make it, you'll make it in time. I will paint. But this is important, HJ. We have to. We have to. Matthew McConaughey is Bobby G. No. All right, all right, all right. <laughs> no. <laughs> that guy can act, but he's not... I don't think he fits. He doesn't. <laughs> I think we were sitting on Matt Smith for um, Fulcrum. I feel like it's not, it's not, it's not sitting right with me. We have to find a better Fulcrum. Okay. Okay, who hosts us now? Okay. What do you need? What do you need to be Fulgrim? You need to have, first of all, you need to have a visually appealing look. Okay, you know what? I think I hold on. I, gotta, I think I can answer my own question. Um, would you say uh, the actor that plays Fulgrim is an actor who can play an elf in Lord of the Rings or something like that? Yep. You need to. You need to have that. You need that arrogance. Arrogance. Um, the the prissiness, the the haughtiness. Not the haughtiness, haughtiness more than but the prissy. haughtiness, but yeah. H A U G H. Yeah. Yeah, you'd need that. Orlando Bloom, no. God, no. no. I think he would get stabbed way too early. Hmm. Jason Momoa could do uh, Vulcan. I think Jason Momoa can do a number of them. Yeah. But he's got the physique for it, I think. Right? Because Vulcan's supposed to be one of the bigger I want, primarchs, I want he? a blonde Oscar Isaacs for Fulgrim. Blonde Oscar Isaacs. Oh, wait. Didn't he already do that? He did oh, that in the Harry Potter movies, didn't he? No, you're thinking Jason Isaacs. Hey, sorry, sorry, I meant Jason. Not, ooh, yeah. Oscar Isaacs do it? He could, but I like the idea of Jason Isaacs better. Yeah, no, actually, yeah, for sure. Well, that's what I was thinking. I want Jason Isaacs to do it. Yeah, he would. He'd be all right for that. He had this terrible. Viggo Mortensen as Sigismund. Yeah, hands down. Yeah. Sean yeah. Bean as Ferris Menace. That's that's already locked in. Yeah. <laughs> Oscar Isaacs could do Corex. Yeah. See, now, Ooh, now I want hates. Pedro Pascal in here somewhere. Pedro Pascal. Mm. Oh, um, <clears throat> who's the first captain of uh, the Night Lords? Sever Severtar? Yes. Yeah. Yes, I like it. God, if we only had a couple of billion dollars in any kind of power in Hollywood. Lee Pace. Lee Pace is hands down Lucius the Eternal. <laughs> yeah, I can see that. <laughs> All right, guys, we have to start a Kickstarter uh, to raise. How much is this going to cost? <laughs> like it's going to be, it's going to be more than a billion dollars for all the people we want, right? 
So uh, let's yeah. go conservative and try to raise two billion dollars. Idris Elba can play anybody, but he's gonna get typecast in the Vulcan. Yeah, he will. Which is unfortunate. However, do you know who I think would make the? I think he'd make the best lion. I think he, he can do. He the, would uh, actually. I think he could do the the uh, sourpuss. Um. Yeah, I think he could do it. Now we're Seagates. We have to get two billion because these actors are going to hold out for a lot. We have to get two billion. Yeah. Okay. We still don't have anybody to play Magnus. Okay, we're on the world. We have to, we have to solve the the Magnus problem. The Magnus problem. Who is going to be Magnus? We need... Now, the person doesn't have to be physically big. We can uh, CGI it. For yep. perspective, all this kind of stuff. It doesn't have to be big. We can dice... So, the look isn't that important. We need somebody... The look's easy. Can, do you want Jason Momoa to be Magnus? No. I don't, I don't know. It's... Uh, I want to be able to take Magnus seriously. As soon as he starts speaking, he's going to lose all credibility. Tom Hilston? Yeah. Too young. Too young. Most of our Tom actors are too old. Tom he was Loki. He's still too young. You think he's too young? Okay. Yeah, he looks like he's in his 20s still. Okay, well, that's just genealogy. I'm man. assuming he's close to 40. But Probably. He, he, looks, he, he looks way too young. Hugo Weaving. Oh, Hugo Weaving. He, I, I, uh, I won't cast him in my movie. Sorry, won't do it. When he said he Ooh. was done with that style of film... I was done with him. What about Sam Neill? Ooh. Hey, he's a contender for Melkador, actually. No. No, Sam no. Neill. He's Who did some, we... No, Sam Neill is some fleet officer. Yeah, okay, I'll give him that. Who did we say was Melkador anyways? Uh, we... He replaced Patrick Stewart. I, I forget. You, you were supposed to write these down. No, I said somebody. Oh, I'm, I'm sure somebody did. Too. We haven't recorded. I'll, I'll go back and rewatch the tape. Charles Dance. That's who it was. Ah, that's right. Yeah. Uh, oh, you know who else I want to get in here? Another actor I, yeah. I, I want to see more of? More Ben Foster. Ben Foster. Where can we put Ben Foster? Let's see. He's Ben Foster. Uh, oh, you know, Ben Foster. Yeah. Okay. Where the hell do we put him? I feel like he doesn't fit any Primark. He can, maybe he can be Sanguinius. Of all the Primarchs, I think Sanguinius would be okay to do. It's not quite sitting right. Maybe Ben Foster could actually be Magnus for us. Oh, he could do that. All right, Ben Foster's Magnus. He did uh, Warcraft. Oh, that's not a good argument. Yeah, yeah kind of ruined. You kind of ruined Ben Foster for me. All right, boys out. That's fair. The boys out. All right. No, Sean Bean. Xanos. Sean Bean is already going to be Ferris Manus. He's got to die. Yeah. You could do Ben Kingsley as Magnus. No, Ben Kingsley's Amon. Like, Games Workshop already decided. He's who? Amon, the name character. Uh, just Google uh, Thousand Sons A M O N. Oh, okay. And then go to images. Uh, yep. <laughs> uh, yep. That's, that's him. It's not my fault. He's been precast. Sean yep. Astin? No, I like Sean Astin. Toy Soldier was like one of my favorite movies as a kid, but I don't think he can really act. Hold on. He was amazing at Samwise, hands down. Andy Serkis is someone? Hmm. Hmm. I kind of saw, and when you said it, I saw Andy Serkis as Curse. All right. That's we, it. 
We we need hang an on. Erebus still. Just, just, just hang on, hang on. Stop. Yep. I can't do this anymore. Are you writing these down? I'm I gotta write these down. Gotta gotta write we're these overlapping down. too much, aren't we? Yeah. We're, we're being we're being poor film producers. All right. Legion one. So who did we say was the lion? Ah oh, hell. Come on, man. Well, Gotta start somewhere. We said uh, Idris Elba. Agents. I think so far is my favorite pick for the lion. Okay, Idris Elba. But he's gonna end up being Vulcan, though. Lion. Nope, this is our movie. Okay. Okay, so who did we type? Uh, who did we cast as Fulgrim? We chose someone who does elves. Did we choose? Oh, Oscar Isaac. Is Isaacs. it Jason Isaac? Jason Isaacs. Ah, Jason Isaacs, the other one. The other one. Thanks. Um, who's the fourth Legion? Crap. Fourth Legion is Pert Arabo. Okay, so who's Pert? Uh, I think we're going to have to give it to um, either Paul Giamatti or... I think actually, you know what? Paul Giamatti. Paul Giamatti. Okay, he's locked in. And we got any beats with that? So if, if Paul Giamatti is Perto Rabo, then we have to make uh, um, John Barenthal Angron. All right. Who's the Fifth Legion? Is Fifth, fifth Legion's not uh, Imperial Fist, right? I actually don't know. Hang on. Pull up an additional resource here. I know, I know, Seagates, this is going to be expensive. This is going to be real expensive. This is why we have to, we have to, like, you know, get all our ducks in a row and um, let everybody know on the Kickstarter who, who we're trying to raise the money for. I'm actually thinking, all right. I'm actually thinking. Five is White Scars. Who? Ken. Ken what, Legion Five is Ken Watanabe. Watanabe. I'm just very common. That's that. All right. Six Legion of Space Wolves. Okay. All right. We need a, we need our space viking. Who's our space viking? Isn't he dead, Chatman? Momoa for Russ? I think Momoa can handle being Russ. Okay. Doesn't have to have many so lines. So we're gonna put Jason Momoa there. Yeah, I mean, he, he's he's there. He's there just for the um, the red carpet for the promotion, right? We gotta put a, we gotta put a yeah, big name, this name there. So. Okay, so the seventh legion is the Salamanders. So I think Hemsworth will be wasted on Russ. I think Hemsworth is actually a talented actor. I love me some Travis Sim as well. So who are we, who are we on? We're on to the Salamanders. Salamanders, okay. So we need Vulcan. Okay. Vulcan is... We do not need to worry about the color of their skin. Yeah, for sure. Vulcan is actually one of the few good guys. Yep. Eisenhower, I remember for nine months in the Rock Jocks. Seven months of lurker due to work. First time I catch live. Uh, this is the part where Steve, we, we keep, yes, this is what this is, man. I feel like absolute crap. I'm not feeling well, Einhorn, and I'm trying to get these done by the end of today. So, yeah, we're just trying to stay awake and paint. Um, okay, so he, we, we, we have our, we have our primarily, one of our, one of our best good guy characters. Yep. So he's probably going to get a lot of speaking time. Uh, so, like, this, this, this just can't be, this has to be a good actor. And I think of a deep. I was gonna say Denzel Washington, but I think we need a deep voice, and his is not deep enough. Also, that guy's old as fuck now. Yeah. Oh, seventh isn't Salamanders. My apologies. Okay, sorry. We'll, we'll come back to him. Who's, who's um, seventh then? Seventh Legion is Imperial Fists. I don't care. It could be any Joe Schmo. Todd, you can play him if you want. Nobody cares. Jack Black. No. Um. I got it. I got it. Chapter Master Valrak. Yes, we're, yes, yes. Actually, yes. We're putting Chapter Master Valrak in for Dorn. He's there we're casting go. him. 
Then we've got Night Lords. So we've got Kurs now. Okay, Kurs. Who's going to play Conrad Kurs? This got it. Brie Larson. <laughs> We've, We've had to... so many choices for him. So this person has to play two characters, essentially. He has to be the good guy and the Night Hunter, right? Keeglim, we're going to get to like the others in a moment. William Defoe? No. no. I don't, I don't want to work old. with William Defoe. He seems really weird. And like I'm going to be probably directing this massive $2 billion movie, so... We had Luke Evans as one, but there's someone else. But I, I, I'm, I'm liking Luke Evans as Kurz. Okay, just. But maybe, maybe the fact the that one. William, De, wait, hold on, maybe the fact that William Defoe is a little unsettling for me means he actually would be a good Kurz. But like, hold on, then he's basically just playing his um, Spider-Man character. Yeah, I, yeah. I'd prefer Luke Evans. Luke Evans. Is We're gonna Kurs? do it. I, I'd prefer Luke Evans. I like, I like Luke Evans as Kurz. Or Brie Larson. Okay. Tom Ellis. Tom Thanks Ellis. I forget who Tom Ellis is. Tom Ellis is uh, the devil from Oh um, yeah. Lucifer. Okay. That's um, who we chose. Ooh. You know what? Do we have a Fulgrim yet? Did we lock yes. that in? Fulgrim is Jason Isaacs. What about Tom Ellis instead? Might be a little more affordable. As Fulgrim? Yeah. No, I got it. I know where we're going to put him. Where are we going to put him? Tom Ellis is going to be Lucius. Okay, yeah. Okay. Luke Evans will lock in his curves. We need somebody for the angel himself. Lee Pace? Uh, yeah. Anyone opposed to Lee Pace? Well, Angron, we haven't got to Angron Angron, John Barenthal's our Angron. Is John Barenthal locking in? Yeah, I think I want to lock. I want to lock him in because I love that guy. I got to put him in my movie somewhere. All right. Does Daniel Craig fit anywhere? Like, we can CGI down his age and make him sanguineous. Okay. Like, who's a? Who else could be sanguineous? It's Sanguinius. He's our other good so, guy character. Yeah, that's the other thing. Think of Sanguinius now. Let's oh. consider what kind of character we're Wait talking a minute. about here. Charlie Hunnam? Does he have to go in here? Who? If, if, Charlie, if we put Charlie Hunnam in here, he's got to be Sanguinius. He's the only, the only way he's going to fit. Who is Charlie Hunnam? Uh, the guy from... Um, oh! From oh. Yeah. And that really, really trippy movie. Yeah. Yeah, okay. We'll throw him in there for Sanguinius. Oppositions? I don't think... I, I, I like it. I like it. He can be our Sanguinius. All right. And then we've got uh, the 10th Legion, which is Ferris Manus, and that's Sean Bean. Obviously. Like, there's no, there's no even discussion on that. No, nope, we need somebody to die, and who else dies better? That man knows how. Isn't Charlie Hunnam just the lion? Mm. Over Idris Elba? That moves, that frees up Elba. That frees him up to be Vulcan? It does. But then we're back to I think, being a sanguineous. I, I think Idris Elba is overqualified for Vulcan. Vulcan's too stoic. He would just be playing Heimdall again. He would be. Vigo Mortensen. What if we... Hold on. Vigo Mortensen can. Is he a better Sanguinius? No, no. Vigo's the. No, no. Vigo's not the lion. I just was the lion. He's the lion. I want him to be the lion. I think we leave Vigo as Sigismund, like we had yes, originally yes, heard. Yes, Vigo as Sigismund. Leave Charlie Hunnam as Sanguinius. Idris as Horus. No, Idris is moving to Horus. Yeah. Idris is Horus, for sure. Who did we have for Horus? We don't have anyone yet. No, we, we, did, we, we talked about somebody. Who, who did we just bump out? <laughs> We just bumped out Idris Elba. So far, what we're looking at is 
We have Fulgrim being played by Jason Isaacs. Lucius the Eternal is Tom Ellis. The other way around. Paul Giamatti is Perturabo. Of course. Ken, Ken Watanabe is the Khan. Jason Momoa is Russ. Chaptermaster Valrock is playing Dorn. Vigo Mortensen is his Sigismund. We have Luke Evans as Kurz. Charlie Hunnam as Sanguinius. Sean Bean as Ferris Manus. And John Barenthal as Angron. I'm not putting Ben Foster as Magnus? I haven't gotten there. Oh, okay. I, I'm literally doing it in Legion order. Ben Foster's going in as... Well, you didn't like it when I mentioned Warcraft. Oh, that's right. Ah, damn it. But what about Ben Foster as the lion? Yep. Okay, yep. Make him my lion. Okay. All right, so we're on to the 13th Legion at this point. And the 13th Legion is our Ultramarines. Okay, Gilliman. Who's our Gilliman? Oh, Lee Pace. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I like that. Wait, we already, have, we already have him somewhere. No, we don't. There he is. All right, fourteenth. That's our Death Guard. Okay, hear me out. Don't just immediately laugh. Keanu Reeves as Mortarium. Yeah. I could get behind it, yeah. What's the rest of the chat saying? Did we start this whole thing by talking about uh, Henry Cavill? We haven't put him anywhere yet? Yeah. Oh, are Cavill. we actually just making him the Emperor? I think we had decided that he's the Emperor. Okay. Cumberbatch is Mortarian. No, he's better. No. You don't think Cumberbatch is better than uh, Reeves from Mortarian? Well, I thought we had... No, because we were going to put Cumberbatch... Um, I don't remember where we were putting Cumberbatch now. He could work as Mortarian. I say put him as Mortarian. Okay, he's Morty. All right. No, now, come on, Alex. How are, need... My ego's not so high as to put myself as the emperor. I'm the writer, director, and every extra in the movie. That's it. Now we need our Magnus. Okay. Okay. Who's going to be our Magnus? This is where we hit Ben Foster, and then we had to start writing things down. Yes. Okay. All the Skarsgård, actually. I, actually, any of the Skarsgård can be anywhere here. They could. Uh... Although, the oldest Skarsgård could make a really good um, Malaghurst as well. Yeah. Which is, um... Of course, we Mads Mikkelsen. Uh, we can oh. age down Mads Mikkelsen and make him the uh, Magnus. Yep. Wait, are we doing Mads or Vlad? I'd say Mads. Oh, Faramir. What's the guy's name? Um, yeah. Faramir's? Uh, the, that's the, the, the actor played... He's a good actor. I don't think he fits anywhere. David Wenham. Uh... Run to the Sons of Horus. And we've got Word Bearers, Salamanders, Raven Guard, and Alpha Legion. Oh, Alpha Legion, we were bringing in Tom Hardy. Yeah, that's that's Tom Hardy there. Word Bearers, <laughs> that one's going to require a bit of memory retention. Word Bearers, hey, so we need, there. we need somebody no, no, we're under the that, like, who can act, but also you'd be comfortable saying, fuck off, like, all the time. Like, who has a fuck off face? Well, first of all, we got to do Horus. No, Horus is Idris Elba. It is Elba? Yeah. Okay. El oh, Idris is my horse. Okay. And now we're on to... Because I, I can see following that man even when he turns the chaos. 
And like, he, he can, I think he can play the really good guy and the really bad guy. Right, so now Not we're on to can play Lord a bad guy convincingly. And we've also got, oh, we chose Jeremy Irons as Corferon. Oh, I didn't get Pedro Pascal anywhere. No, Pedro Pascal, we did get in. He is uh, Savitar. Yes. I like Thank it. You. Don't Gotta change it. Him in. It's in. Uh, Come on, chat. Keep the work up. Who, who, who are we on to next? Uh, we need a Lorgar. Okay, I have to close the paint for this. We need a Lorgar. So you need somebody who's got a really good oratory voice, who's got the ability to make you say fuck off, but at the same time is very easy to manipulate. Until it gets pushed too far. Work. <laughs> Russell Crowe? Russell, Russell Crowe. Crow. Okay, no, we, we'll I hire like Crowe. He has to be more hateable. I, I'd hire Russell Crowe, but uh, not for Lorgar. Russell Crowe could actually be um, Constantine Baldor. Paul, you need you need 10 Ein here, uh, and then vehicles. That's that's all I plan on buying for the rest of my dwarfs. Ten iron here, and a bunch of vehicles, and you're good, Paul. Yeah, I need I need a I need I need, I need a good actor who I can hate. So Who's I present that one back those... Mark Strong. I love Mark Strong. He's a solid actor. You want to put him as Lorgar? Oh yeah. No, Corfair. He can be Corfair on. No, Corferon is Jeremy Irons. Oh. If you don't want to make Mark Strong into Lorgar, then he would make a great Erebus or Erebus. I mean. He he's, I want, I want, okay. he plays a villain. I think Mark Strong should be Erebus, actually. Okay. Um, because he Erebus will be a, a key figure here, and, and, and uh, Mark Strong can carry out the whole series. Yeah. Is Timur writing this down? I don't think Timur, I think Timur's working at the moment, playable hero. <laughs> I'm writing all of this down. James Spader. James Spader is going to be Logar. Oh my god, yes. Steve Gates? You got this one. <laughs> Tom Hanks is Logar? Nah, Tom Hanks doesn't fit in this universe. He's too damn nice. Yeah, yeah, he doesn't. Oh, a Karn. Who could be Karn? Do we need? We don't need. A, we don't need a Karn right now. We keep 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 thoughts over a Karn. Keeping thoughts open for Karn. Uh, our next Legion we're looking at is the Salamanders. So we're back to somebody playing Vulcan. So we need we need a big deep voice. Who Ron, per Ron Perlman? Did we not get him in? Did we forget Ron Perlman? Ron Perlman was our original Angron. Is he going to be our Vulcan? He could certainly work as a Vulcan. He, I think he's our Vulcan. Okay. Perlman it is. Well, okay, so Chapman, uh, how, how about this? I don't think Tom Hanks could carry a villain role. No. I think uh, he's Vulcan... been seen in far too many um, good guy roles to be able to do it. Well, Vulcan does not have to be black. Uh, the race of these characters don't really matter, and um, technically, the, uh, the what's the name of the planet? Earth the P. Uh, Whatever the people from that planet four. have a uh, charcoal uh, obsidian skin. So you're like, thinking of Nocturne? Nocturne, not P. Nocturne, yeah, Nocturne. But they don't. They don't. They don't be black at all. Ron Perlman looks like Dorn. No, I don't want to see him as Dorn. I actually, I like, I like, I like Ron Perlman as as uh, Vulcan. And I like Chapter Master Valrak as Dorn. You know, give the fanboy that for sure. Yeah, for sure, he's my Dorn. And also, yeah. if we if we if we have to go to the 
the whole like uh what's the name has to be black if Vulcan has to be black then we can't then we have to be um everybody has to stay the same race or skin color as they have already been depicted and i want idris elba as my horse yeah where does adam sandler fit you know what i think adam sandler could actually act i don't think he fits here but i'm not i'm not writing him out okay so if we've got ron perlman locked in as vulcan we need our corax I, and I, what about? I, I still think. Uh, what about? Maguire. What about you and McGregor? Yeah. Yeah. We we just we should just cut the budget to three bill just in case. Set it to five. Make it a nice round number. You might need it. Five billion. Yeah. Okay. But but that's it. That's our budget. We're not going over five billion. Like that's it. We'll cut okay. things out if we have to. We're not going over a five billion dollar budget. All right. So the next thing we need is we need a Karn the Betrayer. And Keanu Reeves as Karn the Betrayer would be interesting. I could I know I never want to have the words Keanu Reeves and Betrayer mixed in my brain ever. Christian Bale. Sure. Christian Bale. Christian Bale. Alex Howard. This is definitely going to be. Oh, we keep calling it a movie, but this is a. Uh, this is a. Uh, it's a series. It, it's an HBO series. It's an HBO series. series. It's a four thousand and twenty-seven episode series. Christian. As. Hard. Okay. So looking at other key people that we need, uh, well, we need someone in as uh, Garo. Okay, we need another character that can carry the narrative, an actor that can carry the narrative, but also the actor is not to be young enough to carry the, se- the show for multiple seasons. So we need somebody under 40, preferably in their 30, or sorry, uh, maybe even late 20s. We'll, 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 we'll get to the female soon, Spoons. Um, in, 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 my, in my universe, um, 50% of the Space Marines are female, but you can't tell under the armor because it's one uniform for everybody. Problem solved. That works. Problem solved. Um, but, but... The female space marines only get paid seventy-seven percent on the dollar, on the space dollar. From dark. Okay. So the following roles need to be filled, and we may have already filled one of them. I just can't remember who. Uh, no, I, I do remember. Okay, so the following roles need to be filled. We need a Garrow. We need a Typhus, Malaghurst, Abaddon, and Loken. Should we cover all our Primarchs? Yep. Who's our Erebus? Erebus is played by Mark Strong. Okay. So we have we have the caliber of acting set pretty high for our speaking roles. Yeah. Okay. We Garrow's going to be a key figure here. When it comes to Garrow, we need somebody who's got that virtuous presence amongst corruption. Ah, shit. Um, I think I got an idea. Okay. Oh, Seagate says Hemsworth as Logan. Um, I'm Chris thinking, Hemsworth as as Logan. I can get behind that. Yeah. Who's this? Um, one sec. I made a mistake. I gotta fix it. <laughs> Uh, 
David Attenborough's narrator. Yeah. Christopher Eccleston as Logan. I like the idea of Christopher Eccleston as Abaddon. Who's that? Christopher Eccleston. Uh, did you ever watch the G.I. Joe movie? The live action one? Yep. Yeah. Uh, he's the one who played uh, Destro. Okay, yep, yeah, yep, yeah, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. I use my vortex mixer. Um, who is Typhus? Uh, hey, we do don't remember that have uh, a TV show. Um, it was not, it was a, a, a History Channel series. Did one season. Uh, Sons of Liberty. No. Uh, name, the name, main actor's name is Ben something. Yes, spoons. I'm gonna post this in the Discord. <laughs> I've never watched Doctor Who Dirt Life. Like, we're cultured enough to make our own HBO series for $5 billion, but not to watch all that kind of stuff. <laughs> There's nine doctors to get there. Oh, um... Damn it, I know... I know the actor's name now. That's Little Horace. Who's Little Horace? Uh, the guy who played Wash. Okay. I just can't remember his name now. Um. Yeah, neither can I. Actor who played Wash. Jason Statham? Alan no, Tudyk. that guy has no talent. <laughs> I'm sorry, Alan Tudyk. I can't stand Jason Statham. Damn. Hmm. I don't have any... Uh... Oh. Yes, I do. Oh, I can't get to it. I have to under my desk. Rowan Atkinson is Bjorn the Fell Handed. Isn't isn't that Mr. Bean? That is Mr. Bean. David Tennant. Uh how do I get that? Right back. The for our Abaddon, we've already got Christopher Eccleston. I don't know about David Tennant, unless that was supposed to be a joke. I'm not sure that's uh, Paul Greer. I'm not sure that Steve wants to add the rock. You hope this paint's closed. There's one right here, too. I'm an idiot. How old is he? What about Richard Madden as our Nathaniel Garrow? Yep. I like it. Thank you. 
Who's Torgodon? Torgodon is the uh, first captain of the Salamanders. No, he's I one of the. Correct? He's one of the. Um... Is he one of the? Uh, one of the four then? Yeah. Monoval. Yeah. Couldn't remember who that was. David Tennant could play Torgodon. Torgaradon. The other good one of all. Stephen uh, Fry. Jedi. Stephen Fry. Okay, so Jedi Boss is asking who's left to cast. We have to still cast Typhus and Malakurst. And uh, I think that's all of the big ones that we can think of. Do we? Do we? I like the idea of putting Stephen Fry somewhere. He's a Lord of As Terra. A Lord He's, of right. Terra. He's a Lord of Terra. Yeah. So we've got. Oh, he's our Corpera. We haven't been on the Corpera yet, right? Yeah, we do. Oh, we do. Corpera is Jeremy Irons. Jensen Ackles. He could fit in a number of spots. Jensen Ackles could be. Actually, could he be our Paul or our Sol Tarvitz? Yep. We don't have a Sol. I don't know how I missed this all. I'm going to play Riley Nor, though. Beep boop, I'm a dreadnought. I'm, I'm going to put myself in there somewhere. You want a roll for yourself? Yeah. I'm going to do uh, what, you... what can I do besides uh, random Space Marine Guard Cook 3? It's kind of all I got left. Imperial officer, Imperial Navy officer, Naval officer is Sam Neal. Okay, so we still need a Malaghurst and a Typhus. So Typhus is another big Christopher one. Christopher Walken is Malaghurst. Christopher Walken is Malaghurst. I can get behind that, yep. Yeah. yeah. Steve, you get to be Rylanor. Yeah, I'm definitely going to be Rylanor. Okay. We're not going to let Rylanor have any speaking lines, though. Yep. So is he walking in the background? Like maybe a towel around the dreadnought body? The thread of the dreadnought shower? All right. So we need a typhus. Typhus is, a, typhus is an important one. He is. So that, that means we left off a talented actor that didn't come to mind. But also Typhus is going to have to be one of the characters that carry the series. So it's got to be in their 30s. So he can be in every season. Oh, we need it. Oh, we've got two more. We need an Eidolon and a Fabius Bile. Jeez. Now, I want to draw the line. Like, we don't need every first captain slash chapter master, but we definitely need some of the bigger players. Like Eidolon. If we don't cast Eidolon, we're not going to be... God damn it, we need a Luther. Who's... Do we need a Luther? Yeah, we need a Luther. Who's, who's, our, who's our lion? Ben Foster's the lion. All right. You know what? I'm going to make Mark Wahlberg our Luther then. I am actually okay with that. Nick Cage is Typhus? He's too old. He would be... Like, we can CGI him down, but he's too old to... Uh, to sign the uh, uh, fifteen-year contract that I'm gonna require from everybody. The actor that played Red is still alive, whatever his name is. Red, Red who? Who are you think? Uh, Red Foreman from that '70s show. Oh, um. Who are you thinking for him? Uh, there, spoons. Kurtwood Smith is his name. Yeah, Kurtwood Smith. That's right. Oh, you know what he can do? He can. Kurtwood Smith could be uh, Pertorabo's dad. 
Now we're getting weak. Okay. Well, we have to. We have to. Have, the guy hasn't worked in a while. He'll take it for. Well, we have five billion dollars, Todd. I guess. Did Benedict, did Benedict Cumberbatch make it anywhere? Benedict Cumberbatch He's is typing. our Mortarian. Okay, yeah, he'll stay. If you want to make him Typhus, then we need to find a new Mortarian. Typhus to me, sir. He's typing at the time. He's not Typhus yet. Oh yeah, that's right. Paul Gleason. Who is Lotara? I have no idea. Oh, oh, oh just a minute. Paul Bettany as our Typhon. Travis Fimmel as Luther instead. Travis Fimmel. We're going to just yeah. make sure that we every, every officer of the fleet will make sure we hire a woman. Travis Fimmel is our Typhon. We're trying to make here. Sorry, Travis Fimmel is Typhon? No, he's too old for Typhon. He could be yeah. a Luther, though, and kick Walbert out. Yeah, I'd rather... I don't really want to do Walbert. But... Will Ferrell will not be allowed in the same country nope. as me while filming. You get Will Ferrell, I'm out. I'm hardlining Will Ferrell. Paul Bettany. Paul Bettany. Paul Bettany. He's a little too old for what I wanted him as. But who, okay. do, who do we have as Lorgar? Because Paul Bettany is already a better choice for that. Our Lorgar is currently... Just a minute. There's a lot of names I'm going through here. James Spader. No, he's staying. Okay, so where we pull Paul, Paul, Paul Bettany then? Okay, so opening opening uh, roles that are available: Typhon, Eidolon, Fabius Bile. He can be Eidolon. Okay. Eidolon. Damian Lewis is getting a little old, but. Damian Lewis would make a good Fabius Bile, I think. Carl, we are currently casting our movie, uh, our sorry, our HBO Horse Heresy series. We have a five billion dollar budget. Uh, most of it is cast. Um, we're still shy. A couple of characters. Uh, we need an actor for Typhus Typhon. Um, this actor's got to be in their thirties and can carry much of the dialogue. Suggestion, sir. No Ben Stiller. Can't stand it. Ah, hell. You know what? If we don't come up with a good one for Typhon, I'm going to put in a... Uh... Ah, shit. What's that dude's name? Ah, no worries, Carl. Um, from Tropic Thunder, uh, the, the pyrotechnic guy? Danny McBride. He's my backup Typhon if you can't think of a good actor. Oh, fuck, I'll find you a Typhon then. <laughs> Taron Egerton. Who? He was in the Kingsman. I don't know who that is, but when you said Egerton, I'm thinking Joel Egerton. Um, Might be related to him, I don't know. Uh, I'm, I'm thinking Joel Egerton is, 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 is Typhon. He's, he's the guy. You want Joel Egerton. He's the Hold guy. On. Plus, he's a good writer. I can like refer to him if I need to like adjust the script. Well, then we can Buff? bring him on as no, no. We can bring him on for a writing role, but he's in his forties. No, oh. seventy-four. He's almost fifty. Really? Okay. He yeah. he can't do it. Keep him on. Keep him on the side. We gotta throw. We gotta throw the things out there. Okay. You know what though? Okay. On the note for Shia LaBeouf, that dude. That dude can act. He can act fine, but. Like, did you see? There's a movie. Um, ah, I forget what it's called. He played a he played a gangster called his name's Creeper. I can't remember the name of the movie. The movie wasn't good. It wasn't terrible, but 
he was actually awesome in it. Oh yeah, I'm I'm playable hero. We're doing important things. We raised five billion dollars probably. I don't want to just not spend the money properly. Karen Eggerson in uh, general chat. Let me know if you like him. Ooh, not. Four and a half billion going to casting. Yeah, that's pretty much. I'm going to embezzle a billion at least. So. We got to keep everything tight. Oh, Alexander Draymond. Forget it. Who's that? That sounds so familiar. The Last Kingdom. Oh, that show is He's so Uhtred. good. He's Uhtred. Yeah, that show is so good. Typhon. Absolutely. I'll put him anywhere. All right. We need a Fabius Bile. Do we? Do we Let's need so. a Fabius Bile? <sighs> Certainly doesn't hurt. Okay. Okay. Uh, Jeffrey Dean Morgan. Too old to do anything. Colin Firth would also work Too for uh, Fabius Bile. Well, I'm thinking people in their 50s at this point, or do you want somebody younger? Oh, I guess we have CGI. I forgot we have CGI that can age them down. Yep. Let me see if they like, better done than we're off. Forget it. I want Ryan Reynolds. I want Ryan Reynolds as my Fabius Bile. Okay, I like it. I wasn't going to care about this character, but Ryan Reynolds can give uh, Fabius Bile the character that could be interesting to me. Yes. Martin Freeman is drawn Grammaticus, yeah. Yeah. So it's safe to say we have our cast, right? Yeah. So do we let this sit for a bit and let, let the Discord weigh in? Or do I go right now and make the Kickstarter? Uh, I think we could go ahead and make the Kickstarter. You know I'm going to do it, eh? <laughs> I need five billion dollars to make this happen. And each and every one of you need to be locked in for at least one season. Because uh, I think that's all we're going to get. Okay. Now, I have to think about how I'm going to word it where Kickstarter doesn't just turn it off. <laughs> I need to word it carefully. I think Matthias has got a point there. If you make it sound crazy enough, people will pay. That's the hundred percent. I I would actually be worried if this they they did approve it and money started coming in. You wake up the next day. There's like three hundred million dollars. Like, oh shit, what have I done? No, 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 no. I'm gonna put a stipulation. I'm only gonna do it if we make the full five billion. Yeah, but like in your first day, if you make three hundred million dollars, clearly people want to make it happen. Then you've got to figure out some way of contacting our entire cast. I have, I have five billion dollars. They'll take my call. I guess it's true. Then we got to put together a writing team. Mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. Oh, you know what we could do? We could promise, as, as part of your pitch, promise that this will come out before the old world. No. I can't promise that. <laughs> Bet you we can. I want to make a horse heresy series with full roster bailiff celebrities. We need $5 billion for it, so please donate. Yeah. No, 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 no. H.J., that point, I think we're covered. It's one step before that. You have to type it all out and send it for approval by Kickstarter, and then they got to say, yes, we approve this, and then it goes live. If we, if we, No matter what I put on there, if we get past that stage, money's coming in, guaranteed. I got to get past that stage. <laughs> so let's talk about the hurdles. One, this would be the biggest Kickstarter ask in the history of Kickstarter. Two, I don't own the license to the project I'm trying to make. Three, this is insane. Four, I've done one Kickstarter before and I made like 10 grand. Five, C.3. Five, this is insane. <laughs> I'm not saying I'm not going to do it. Six, you've got to get this approved also by Games Workshop. So I'm going to send them an email first and be like, if I can secure the funding of $5 billion, will you approve this? And then if they say yes, the first thing I'm going to say is, well, how come you haven't answered any of my other emails? <laughs> With a postscript of you don't get any say in the cast. <laughs> Flammable Hero, if we just did it, I think all of our money would just go to them in like legal fees. Nah, that would cost a million have made tops. A, product. a million tops. Yeah, but we would have still done it. Try to see you for just having the idea. Yeah. Okay, hold on. So either in the Kickstarter we put in, we need to raise. Oh, the Brent money. Spiner is playing the Necrons HJ. Brent Spiner. All of them. He played all of them. So yeah. e either in the Kickstarter we put in, we need to buy Games Workshop and then make the movie, or we right now rename everybody to. It's not the Horus Heresy. It's the it's the Chorus Heresy of Horus. No, we still have to change the name. Yeah, we'll call it the Chorus Controversy. So, uh, Idris Elba's going to play Chorus Cooper Call. Uh, Steve? Yeah. I, um, I don't know how to say this other than just saying this. I can't get behind this insanity any further. I'm out. The Looper Call Kerfuffle? I think we can go with the Looper Call Kerfuffle. We could do that. Okay, write it down. God, no. So we got to rename everybody. We'll start off with the lion. He's the first Primark. Uh -oh. We'll call him Tiger L. Dick. Super tall. Kerfuffle. Uh, Tiger L. Dick. Okay. Who's number two? And uh, okay, are we just gonna start with the the Primarchs and then work our way down? Yeah. Okay, then we've got Fulgrim, and Fulgrim is getting named Nancy Boy. Okay, Nancy Boy, I like it. Uh, then we've got Perturabo. Oh, I got names for him. Um, man. Let's just call them Salty Crackers. Salty Crackers? Okay. Uh, we've got the Con. Hmm. Oh, sorry. Go back up. It's, Tar it's Tiger La Richardson. Tiger La Richardson. Okay. That's true. Khan is not a protected name. He stays Khan. 
Okay, so then we so he's just con. Then. He's con. Okay. Then we've got Lehman Russ. And you could just change him to Russ. How about Lemon Roof? Lemon Snow. Lemon Snow? Okay. Uh, then we've got Dorn. Rogal Dorn. Dorn, eh? We'll just call him Valrak. Yep. Yep. Valrak well, it is. We'll, we'll give him two or three billion. He'll be cool with it. As himself. Curse? Um... What's the name of the actor from the movie? Uh, the actor we chose? No, 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 no. From the original movie that they stole it from. From oh. Pops Snow. Oh, I don't know. It's Colonel Kurz? Was it? Whichever the rank the character is based off of was called now. Like the Colonel or whatever. Colonel Kurz with C? Yeah. Okay. We need Sanguinius renamed. Mm, the Angel of Blood? How about just the Angel? The Angel? Okay. Yeah. We need Ferris Manus renamed. No, we don't, because that's just Latin for Iron Hand. As close as we're going to get. Yep. Okay, Angron gets renamed to Angry Ron. Are we pl- is Ron Perlman playing Angron? No, John Barenthal. Okay, yeah, all right. Angry Ron. Uh, Colonel Gulliman. Kurz. His name is Colonel Kurz with a K. Colonel Kurz with a K? Yeah. I'm going to stick with the K? Okay. Gulliman, Bobby G. Um, or Robot Girly Man. I'm call him Big Bob. Big Bob? All right. Mortarian. Who do we have? Benedict Cumberbatch. Hmm. Mortarian. Let's just call him the Reaper. He's just based off the Grim Reaper, right? Yeah, basically. Reaper. All right. We got Magnus the Red. Cyclops. Uh, too close. To a Here mythical creature? Else. Okay, yep, never mind. I was thinking the X-Man. Cyclops it is. Horus. Oh, sorry, it's it's Immortarian. Immortarian? Immortarian? Immortarian. Or... Immortarian? I think we're doing good work today, folks. Scarlet Mage? Scarlet Magey? Scarlet Giant? A lot of things work. A lot of things work. Albus the Blue? All right. Uh, we need Horus renamed. No, we don't. Just name him Horus Lupercal? We gotta change Lupercal. Horus we can keep. Okay. So he becomes Horus... Uh, Horus Moonwolf. I was literally, I swear to God, I was literally able to say Horus Moonwolf. There we go. Dr. V, bud, uh, he came at a rough, the rough time. Dr. V, there's like terrible things happening here. Lorgar. We've, Lorgar we've been streaming to... for, I think, five hours today. We have, uh, we're making a Kickstarter to raise $5 billion for our HBO series for the Horse Heresy. And then we realized that we don't want to spend a million dollars in legal fees. So we're going to have to rename everybody and slightly change the story. So we're just renaming everybody right now. Now you're caught up. No, we're currently on Lorgar. Lorgar? Yep. We just call him Shifty? 
Shifty, sure. All right. Vulcan. Hmm. I don't think that word is trademarked. I don't think so, but the spelling of it might be. Yeah, well, it's spelled differently. So we'll spell it with a C? Yeah. Uh, that might get too close to Star Trek, but we can deal with them. Uh, Corvus Corax is renamed as the Raven. No. No, Corvus Corax is just it's just a type of it's a raven. That's exactly what it is. Yeah, just leave it. Okay. They All right. Own Corvus Corax. That's fair. And Alpharius and Omega. Alpha. We'll call Alpha and Omega. That's the one. For whatever reason, I couldn't remember Omega. We are going to make tens of dollars on our $5 billion investment. We will make tens of dollars. All right. We Do we need a new name for Malkador? Ah. Uh... Melvin Kador. And we'll call him Mal Kador for short. Sorry, you said Melvin Kador? Melvin Kador. All right. Uh, the Emperor of Mankind can just be the Emperor. Yep. No, no, we can call him Big E. Okay. Let's see, who else do we have? I Erebus. I feel like no time has been wasted today. Not wrong. Mallory's great. Now you, you may have stopped your work to type all this out. Not entirely, actually. But I've been working the entire time. With these names, we better be getting the text-to-speech guy to write our script. Uh, yeah. Now put them on the list of people to contact. All right. Uh, I mean, script writer. Just put him on the list right under lawyers. <laughs> to contact. Layers, text to speech guy. Got it. Do we need to rename any of the supporting cast? Yeah, for Such sure. Such as Erebus. Okay, so we need a name now for Erebus. <sighs> Bob Oldenkirk plays her lawyer. <laughs> abacus? It's Abacus. Abacus. Abacus? Yes. Thank you, Matthias. That one's perfect. Okay. We need Corferon. Corferon. You just made up these words, right? That's not yeah, they kind of did. That's not a reference to anything? I don't think so. Who's playing Abacus for us? Abacus is being played by Mark Strong. Ah, of course. And Corferon is being played by Jeremy Irons. Corferon's like a mummy. Furry corn. We forgot someone. And I don't know that we have a role for him. We don't know if you have who? I said we forgot someone, and I don't know if we have a role for him. Who, who, who do we forget? Liam Neeson. Liam Neeson. He can be, he can be one of our only male officers. Okay, so he goes then with uh, Sam Neill. Yes. Oh, sorry, one of our two male officers. Right. That's, that's fine. That's fine. Female. That's fine. That's your female. All right. What did we say Corferon's name was? 
I got nothing. Lore carry. How about Charmin? Charmin it is. Actually, yeah. Uh, you know what? Hold on. Liam Neeson plays the silent um, custodies that's in like every shot with the Emperor who has no lines. But like we all, all right. know that if shit goes down, he's about to like, wreck everybody. Silent. Or Commissar Cody. Liam Neeson. Nope, he's a commissar. Okay, so he's. he's what is he now? Things. He's gone from an imperial officer to a custodian to a commissar. What yeah. is he? He's two things. He's a commissar and he plays every custodian. All right. <laughs> and he is also a custodian. No, every custodian. Like, I don't know if you have the proper passion for this project anymore, Tom. Like, I don't know what you're doing. You're changing your mind. That's the problem. I have the passion for this. You just keep changing your mind. No, the, the, I just, the ideas just keep getting better. You got to stay on board. I am on board. And Dr. Jeez. V was thinking about shutting us down, and this is his channel, okay? You have to stay focused here. YouTube gave him my channel a year ago. I don't know why. But I work for him. <laughs> You're the only guy who's ever gotten that weird bug, Dr. V. <sighs> All right, uh, Torgaridon. Call him Tori Gear. Tori Gear. Tuski. Gear. Okay. Little Horace still works. Little Horace Loken. still works. Loken needs a new name. Putting money into my channel. Thank you, Dr. V. <laughs> I want you to know you two took a cut and I'm taking the rest. <laughs> <laughs> I have the best job. Okay. He's going to be Garvey. Drew, you're going to quit your job and come work for me on my movie, right? I need a PA. We need a new name for Abaddon. Abaddon? No, we don't. Abaddon works. Yep. Okay. Malaghurst. I don't know if that comes from anything, but we can call him Malagor. Malagor. Okay. So if you <laughs> sound R's got it. R be the destroyer. Um, if you really want to rename everything, just turn on closed captioning, and I'll just say everything, and whatever it types out. That would also work. <laughs> man one, man two. Yeah, we could do that. But that's not as much fun. Arby the Destroyer, that sounds like the food we're going to feed them before their first shoot. Is Abaddon the Destroyer? Wait, shouldn't, shouldn't Indris Elba also play Abaddon? Why would he play Abaddon as well? I thought Abaddon was um, a near-perfect clone of... Uh... No, he would also be playing Little Horus then. But I, thought, I thought they're both... I thought they're all like clones of him, but Little Horus just came out short. No, Little Horus is named that because he bears too. such a striking resemblance. Oh, okay. I don't know. I don't know what I read. <laughs> I don't know what you read. <laughs> That's what I remember reading, but it's been a while since I've read them. I'm known to be distracted while listening to audiobooks. We're Abaddon renaming the Spoiled. Typhoon. Abaddon Typhoon. The Spoiled. <laughs> we have so many names. Oh, God, we do. Uh, Typhon is now Typhoon. Yep. Oh, we That's can see. Oh, yeah, it'll be Typhoon. Sounds pretty badass. Taking a break from painting to do my nails. Hope everybody's cool with that. Uh, Nathaniel Garrow should be all right. Nathan Goro. Nathan Goro. Okay. Nathan. 
Goro. Karn. Corn. Say we. Say corn. Corn. K O R N. Ooh, K O R H N. It's actually a pretty good typo. All right, we need Sevatar renamed. Severer. Severer. Sigismund will be Sig is the man. But he's not he's not Typhus yet, Dr. V. He's Typhon right now. So we can't call him Typhon. Because in this timeline he's still Typhon. We can't call him Typhoon. Who then become Typhus? Sabaton? What's that? What do you say, Todd? Uh, we need Sigismund. How about Sig is the no, man? No, Sigismund is the awful uh, word. We, we, we can work with that. It works? Oh, yeah. Okay. But Fabius Sig is Vile. the man, obviously. Yeah. And he's being played by Vigo Mortensen, so. Who is the other man? Yeah, basically. Uh, Fabius Bile. We can just name him Fabulous. Bile. Fabulous. 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 Bill. Fabulous Bill. Yes, it's Ryan Reynolds. I love it. The name works. This is excellent. Uh, Eidolon. Uh, is Eidolon is a word, right? What, is, what, what does Eidolon mean? Anybody? I believe we're good with Eidolon. Eidolon. Or maybe the words Eidolon. Ancient Greek literature. It's it's a spirit image of a living or dead person, a yeah. shade or phantom lookalike of the human form. That is an Eidolon. Yeah, we're good. Okay. Da, 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 da. Rylanor needs to be renamed. And I, I have the name for the Rylanor. Okay. What's that? The mountain. That's your, <laughs> that's your right, role right. after all. Because I'm playing the Dreadnoughts. Gotcha. My bad. Yeah. All right. Salt Harvitz. Or Tarvitz. Paul, Paul Sarvitz. Paul Tarvitz? Tall Sarvitz. He's just really tall. Oh, Tall Tarvitz. Uh, Lucius the Eternal just becomes Lucius. Sound good? Yep. And then we have Luther. Luther can remain. Luther is Luther? Yeah. All right. We have renamed everybody in the Looper Call Kerfuffle. Okay. So, oh shit. One second. I just messed up something. Oh no, we can't call it Looper Cogger Bubble. No, it's the Moon Wolf. Yes. Okay, so instead of. We gotta go back to Horus. We can't use the Heresy. So it's the Horus. Well, it's the Moon Wolf Kerfuffle. The Moon Isn't Wolf it? Kerfuffle? We just go with that. Mm. <laughs> I like the alliteration, though, of the Horus Heresy. So, how about the Moon Wolf Melee? The Moon Wolf Melee. The Moon Wolf Meltdown. Meltdown? Meltdown. I like I'm liking melee. Oh no! Hold on, Flim. No, it's I, the moon wolf. I, it's the moon wolf misunderstanding. Okay, that'll work. Still, that'll still work. It'll be. It'll be the, the misunderstanding. Will be integral to the plot. Standing. I turn into this a galactic wide civil war. That is good to get. When brothers can get it. There is How much money, Dr. V, do you think we should put aside for lawyers? Should I just call it a million or should I put more than that aside? Okay, I got our movie tag or our TV series tag. It's an All right, we have to raise $15 billion. <laughs> 
Why yeah. now? Well, five billion for the movie and ten billion for the legal fees. Why are we going to need ten billion in legal Dr. fees? Dr. V does not let everything. me down. If he gives me advice, I know he's true. He's like he's like Flamboy Hero. It's just going to be correct. All right, fine. If we got it. We got it. Just saying. Uh, it is, if you rename it, sucks, what? All right. So I got this for our our working like um, tag. Yep. For the series, when brothers get together, there's always going to be a misunderstanding. <laughs> okay. All right. So okay. Okay. Do I make the trailer or the teaser before I make the the uh, Kickstarter? I think we have to have the teaser in order to get the Kickstarter to have enough interest. Yeah, Doctor V. So we so before you got here, we already talked about that. We had two we had two ways of going. We thought either we raise five billion, do our thing, and then fight them after the uh, afterwards, or we raise the money, buy out Games Workshop, have the rights to everything anyway, and then make our movie. And they are publicly traded, right? So I probably get enough to get a controlling stake. Make the trailer animated with stick figures. I was thinking about using actual miniatures. Soundar. Just to be clear, in your theoretical $5 billion, $1 million in legal fees only, that's 0.02% of your budget. That's true, if you put it that way. Reunion somewhere. Wait, what's the name of our movie again? I forget. The Moonwolf Misunderstanding. The Moonwolf Misunderstanding, okay. So I have to I have to get this painted. And I'm, I'm actually closer to done than Oh shit. I gotta get working. I am running out of time. Okay, um No, I'm not as close as I thought I was. I gotta get back to painting. But then they gotta make this trailer. And then I gotta make the Kickstarter thing. Income statement. There we go. Should we um I feel like if we ask for five billion dollars, Kickstarter will refuse the Kickstarter. So can somebody real quick do a quick Google search uh, for me and find out which what Kickstarter brought in the most amount of money in the history of Kickstarter? And then we're going to ask for just a little bit less than that. Profitable. 2.87 is Games Workshop's total market cap. So we can make an offer of 1.5 for majority stake. All right. Okay. Steve. 6.5 will do it. What's that? In March of 2015, Pebble's second smartwatch project completed its crowdfunding and publicity run with $20.34 billion raised in Kickstarter pre-order funding. Oh, we're good. We only need six point five billion. We now that being said, we're good. Being said, I just looked at the income statement for uh, Games Workshop for twenty twenty one. They reported a fiscal revenue of three hundred fifty three point two million dollars. So maybe we take that five billion and we just do buy a Games Workshop. Okay. Yeah. That's no. No. We need six point five. You want to know what? I actually bring weight to this Kickstarter. Do you have Amazon Prime, uh, Todd? I do. All right, open up a tab, open up your Amazon Prime, go to go to the video section. Okay. And everybody else should do this as well right now. If you want to see the weight I bring to this Kickstarter. You know what? Right, I better confirm right, well, something that it's actually still there. All right, and go to which tab? Just open up uh, open a Prime video. Yep, I've got it. And then you're going to search for I just want to check something before I tell you to search it. Yep, it's there. Mm -hmm. And then I got to double check. Now remember, this is my family's Amazon Prime. Yeah, no, 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 Prime. you're good, you're good, you're good, you're good. Don't worry. Okay, okay. okay. Um, then type in Rangers Bloodstone. The Rangers. And then Bloodstone, one word. Rangers Bloodstone. Oh, this is Dave's thing. The fact. I'm in it. No, 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 but you know what I mean. I want to make sure I'm credited. 
I don't think I had credit uh, anywhere. I, I don't see you in here. I am suing. Uh, Quirk's credited before you. <laughs> if that Yeah, we well, had... What the hell? All right. How is everybody Look, credited but me? IMDb. Let's see if you're in IMDb. If you're in IMDb, you're fine. What the, the Ranger? Ass? Right? The Ranger? Yeah. Bloodstone. All right. The Can Ranger. I, I was the orc and I was one of the ruffians. I was two Top things. Cast. Um, there you are. So Head Ripper, IMDb? Outlander Brood. You're on IMDb as Steve DeMarco. Did they at least spell my name right? S T E V E. That's not how I spell it. I'm Stefano. Oh, they've got Steve. Well, Steve DeMarco. Well, that's we're gonna have to pretend that that's me, I guess. Well, I mean, no one Head else Ripper? has a picture except Dave. I am credited yep. as for the Rangers of Bloodstone, Life of a War Gamer, the Rangers Campaign, and Wolf Scars. <laughs> My Wait a minute, you have HS more than Oscar. one thing? I have four things on IMDb. <laughs> We're making this oh, oh no, you're more than that. You're up here for like 16 different things. <laughs> hey, they got your they got your height, right? What's the height say? Six foot four. Nice. It's actually accurate. Uh, they've got you for 10 self-credited items. Including Primark Battles, Blood Bowl League, Dark Angels vs. Space Wolves, Slow Grow Campaign, View Augustine Agent? Station. <laughs> View Agent, Publicist, slash Legal Information? I'm going to click on it. Oh. Actor, a credit is actor, slash editor. Hey, you're, uh, so you, you've got one, two, three different miniseries. Guys, we're making this Kickstarter. No, I'm it's, I'm only six four, chat man. I recently measured myself. I actually am only six four, not six five. But I've had five operations on my spine, and a little bit was taken out every time. So I think I lost an inch. Um, well, that's my story anyway. Um, we are doing this campaign. I, I my, my well my, my stage name Doctor V is Stephen with a V. Yeah, it's true too, Drisky. We are gonna make five billion dollars. I just gotta see something now. I am not gonna pay any of you anything. I'm gonna embezzle all this money for myself. They got 2.7 out of 10 stars. Well, more than I would have given it. The reviews mean nothing these days. Perfect. That's true. I, I will I will spend um millions of dollars building the perfect studio. I will buy every miniature professionally painted. And just make bow reports all day, every day. And the best campaigns with special effects. Don't 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 call me Head Ripper, please. No, he said he'll call you Head Ripper from the Rangers. Oh, that hurts. That hurts my two point seven out of ten stars. Hey man. That's two point seven more than zero. That is true. I am a professional painter, Drewski, but I, ain't pay, I will pay myself four and a half billion dollars to paint everything. Two point seven is not bad. What's bad then? It's I know Matthias is at a ten, not five. Fair. That's a good point. I am positive with a two point seven rating. I I bring the weight to raise six point five billion dollars. 
Yeah, it's it's all you. It's not from Idris Elba. It's not from Hemsworth or, you know, Jason Momoa, Luke Evans. None of those guys are bringing anything. To the no, table. It's, it's the guy who played Ed Ripper, obviously. Yeah, yeah. Knock it off. Yep, yep. Oh, yeah, I'm mean, back to work. You have been working. No, it's not true. How much but I've, been, going I've, been, I've been taking breaks to, to plan out the world's perfect um, HBO series. You know what? How much is HBO? Maybe we'll buy that too. Oh, jeez. Well, no, um, like, I won't take away any possible hurdles. We buy Games Workshop for $1.5 billion. We buy HBO. Oh, stop, 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 stop. Stop. Yeah. We just need to buy Games Workshop because they've got their own streaming service. That's true. And it's true. We're going to be like turning actors away from this project for sure, Dr. V. And I mean, once we buy that, people are going to actually want to subscribe for Games Workshop's videos and such, right? And then I'll put the Mordheim campaign there. Yeah, we could do that. All right, I have posted in the general chat the Moonwolf misunderstanding document. Okay. Uh, I only want positive reviews for that document, everybody. Kickstarter one actor bails, I'll have to give it back. Okay, so Spoon, so all we do is we say when they decide that they're going to bail, that we're in negotiations with them. Um, actually, I think the appropriate way to handle the situation with would be, um, uh, we'll say something like, these are the actors we're going to, we're going to con uh, contact for consideration of the role. But we need the money now because we can't be guaranteeing that these actors will live to see tomorrow. That yes. sounds a little bit more violent and threatening than I actually wanted to. I just want them to pay us now. Well, there could there could be real life misunderstandings too, right? No, HJ, we didn't we didn't want to do Danny Trejo. Uh, Steve had locked in Ken Watanabe. Yeah, Danny Trejo. I don't know where to put him. Kind of like the dude, not his earlier stuff, but like old Danny Trejo. I think is pretty good. What could he do? It could be a counselor to the con. True. Everybody needs a planet, right? Uh, he could be like one of his... Uh, oh, oh, I got it. He could be a librarian who, after the Council of Nikea, gets upset at him. No, every, no, no, no. Everybody who's ever made a movie has taken some artistic license and changed a few things. He is going to be First Captain Machete. First Captain Machete. Yeah. Okay. No. If the deal falls through, you accuse them of misrepresenting the number of bots. Uh, well, boy, hell. you're <laughs> off. Well, boy, you're off the project. I'm sorry. Um, both the main actor, Stephen DeMarco, and the executive producer, myself, have said we won't work with Will Ferrell. Yeah. Also, I won't work with Will Smith after he slapped the guy. And Leonardo DiCaprio, I mean, if we have a flood, he's going to be on the door all by himself and let the rest of us drown. But if we did hire DiCaprio, think about the 25-year-old woman we'll keep around. I guess it's true. We could just make him, like, he could have a recurring role of every Marine that dies at the drop site massacre. I forgot he can. Oh, you mean, um... Uh, William Zapka? Yeah, we have to get William Zapka in the movie or in the series. Half the half. Who is he? The Who is kid. he? Oh, uh, that's not the Karate Kid, is it? Yeah, he's he's the actor who played the Karate Kid in the original movie uh, TV show. Oh, was his was the uh, the character's name? No, something in, no, no? The, the, the character's name is um, Johnny, but the actor's name is William Zapka. He played the original Karate Kid. Okay. All right, let me see if I can find a role for him. Yeah, he's the one who got bullied by that Italian guy and that uh, uh, look, uh, Asian dude. Okay. Let me find a role for him. 
No, Zabka wasn't a bully. He was the guy who got bullied by the Italian kid. Ralph Macchio is the guy who played uh, Danny LaRusso, and he was the bully in that movie. Have you not seen it? Who, me? No, God, no. Well, and Matthias Breder. Oh, Credit Kid is one of my favorite movies as a kid. It's, um, it's about this uh, kid who um, who's just taking karate, and then one day, um, this and they're in California or whatever, right? And one day, this Italian kid from Jersey moves to town and steals his girlfriend and bullies him. So they do... And uh, Jack and... Chan shows up. No, that's that's the other... You know what? <laughs> You're not cultured. You're not cultured. I am. I just never saw the Karate Kid. Tell me Tyler paired me. No, no, we're using Idris Elba as our horse. I hear it's strongly rumored that he's already accepted the project, Johnny Payne. And also all the other characters. Yeah, we saw... Hold on. We, 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 Johnny, John Payne has an idea that might save us a bunch of money. With Tyler Perry, he plays everybody. You know what? Um, when he played um, Alex Cross, I thought he did a pretty good job. No Chris Tucker. No. No Chris Tucker for me. Unless we're going to remake a uh, fifth element. I want that character back, sure. No, we could just add that character in. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> that guy got tainted by the warp. <laughs> now, here's the problem, though. If you bring him in... Problems already? You've got... Yeah. Think about this. If you bring that character in, then you got to bring, bring in Corbin Dallas. And we can't bring in Corbin Dallas because oh, Bruce Willis true. has got aphasia. And he's not acting anymore. But Corbin, my man, we can CGI him in. I'm not worried about the CGI effects. No, for we can Corbin CGI Dallas. in a Corbin Dallas. I will play Corbin Dallas. We'll CGI Bruce Willis's face over. I him. cannot be a part of this project if you think that you've got the acting chops to replace Bruce Willis. Hold on. Did hold you on, push hold Alan Rickman? Put the camera. Just hang on. I'm doing other things, like working. <laughs> All right. Uh, I'm looking at the camera. Now, now, I, now, now, you do that. What's that? What's that stuff called? That um, that face swapping thing. Bruce Willis. I, I, Flammable here. You make a really good point, <laughs> buddy. <laughs> make a really good point. Steve was an amazing head ripper. Yeah, Steve, give us a yippee kaye. You know, go frenzy yourselves. We just want Yippie Kaye. We didn't ask for the rest. My friend. That was really disappointing. <laughs> Mother Frenzy. So tired. <laughs> ah, so productive. I don't know. I don't know what happened today, guys. I know exactly. There's going to be a Kickstarter. I know exactly what happened. What happened? You opened up a Discord channel, That's and fair. I was working from home. That's fair. Wait, you know what? That's a, I know, right? It's not. That's just perfect, Bruce Willis. I think Johnny Payne is uh, angling for his own starring role. Now I know what a TV dinner feels like. I can totally do it. All right, but who's going to be your Alan Rickman? Who are you throwing off of Nakatomi Plaza? It's 
saw the frosting in Rhino 7. I've had a lot of energy drinks today. And not a lot of sleep. Have a good night, HJ. Later, HJ. It's probably pretty late for you. Shit, I gotta get painting. No I am... one has stopped you. No, I know, I know, I know. I'm just way behind schedule. It's fine. We have been supporting you. I'm, I'm feeling actually, Johnny. I'm, I'm feeling. I'm feeling a lot better. My nose is still runny. Um, my sinuses hurt, but like the back pain, like my my lungs are fine. My head doesn't hurt, so I think I, I think I'll probably be fine by like one night's sleep. I'll probably be fine. But I tell you this right now, if I don't get these painted, I'm gonna stick calling sick. If you don't get them painted, just proxy in dwarves. No, no. <laughs> Trust me, you can no do, can no do. Sure you can. Everyone's calling them space dwarves. Nobody on the internet will get offended or upset. Matt. Someone's get upset and offended on the internet. I'm not helping anymore. Um, well, they're mine. They're my Votan. But yes, um, they're going to be used in battle reports this week. I don't, I don't record 40k on my channel currently. Uh, I will be putting 40k back on my channel, probably in 10th edition, when my buddies come back to play it. Do you really enjoy 9th edition, Steve? Like, legitimately. Um, that's that's a whole conversation. Um, the Good answer is yes and no. Like, it's not my favorite way to play 40k, but yes, you... I have fun. I don't fake when I'm laughing in a battle report. I'm not faking it. No, I know you're not. I know you're not faking it. I've played enough games with you yeah. to know that. But legitimately, do you think that if they did not introduce something like Tempest of War decks or the open war cards? That ninth edition would still be an enjoyable. Yeah, way to I would play only play Crusade. Okay. Not that, not that, not that um, Eternal War or match play stuff isn't fun. Um, it just it's it, it's it's been too samey for two years. And because the way scoring works, um, and it, it kind of uh, guides you on how to make your list, that when guests come in, I'm seeing the same, same like if I'm playing against Death Guard, I know what malls I'm playing against. I've said this a thousand times. Like so, it used to be um, older editions, a guest would come in and they'd have radically different armies. I'm playing against different stuff like all the time, like dra radically yeah. different stuff. Now it's like. If I'm playing Death Guard, I'm playing the same Death Guard I fought a thousand times. If I'm playing against Necrons, I'm playing against the same Necrons. So instead of there being uh, 17 armies, a thousand ways of playing, now there's just 17 armies. Yeah. The meta ruins every game. Yeah, and that's not. I don't. I'm not blaming Games Workshop for it at all. Like, the internet has gotten smaller. It's made the world world smaller. Um, mm. it's 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 going to be a forever problem going forward, unless. EMPs go off, and then we're playing with you know candlelight in our basements because we do have to do it outside. Uh, what do you find is the standard space marine builds? Um, like what's in every marine list? So there, there is there's variation when you say space marines. So if you say space marines. Well, they're not. They're, I'm not seeing them on the table. But if you see Blood Angels, it's just going to be um, uh, like three units of Sanguinary Guard, a uh, few units of uh, Infiltrators, um, the Sanguinor, mm -hmm. and then if it's Dark Angels, it's going to be a bunch of Terminators. Even though I think the bikes are better, we're still seeing a bunch of Terminators. If it's Space Wolves, you're seeing um, Thunder Wolf, Cav. Um, and like the armor of Russ uh, and Dreadnoughts. 
No many wargaming? No, I got to paint today. What about uh, Raven Guard? Do you see a lot of them? No, I, I haven't. I haven't run into Raven. I I haven't played them once in ninth, and I haven't run into them once in ninth. That's fair. But what I do play against a lot of is Necrons, Death Guard, Thousand Suns. Um, Ow. Death Watch a lot again. So, you know, see a lot of Death Watch. Weird, Lee. And I know, I think it's a fact to say if I focused on 40k on my channel on the Mountain Miniatures instead of Fantasy, I would have had to have left Mini Wargaming by now. Sorry, did you say you'd have to have left or yeah. you, you would have been able to? I would have had to have because if I'm able to, um, I'm misusing my time. If, if this mm -hmm. channel can ever support me to work full time from, and I still work at Mini Wargaming, I'm doing a disservice to this channel. Does that make sense? That's fair. Yep. At that point, it would be you are trying to have your cake and eat it too, really. Like, like, I'll I'll find a way. Not that I have to look hard. I'll stay at Mini Wargaming for the studios and everything. I have, as a guy who created a channel, I gained so much and still value so much from having access to, like, their studios and their experience and their equipment. Even though I guess I got the experience now, but you know what I'm saying. Yeah. It was so valuable to me in, in growing this. It feels like David McCurry had a Jax vs. Luka game. Um... I don't because I was thinking about this just before I went down for my nap plan. Well, here, like if I if I actually I, I'm fine, I'm fine. But if I was actually sick, it was it was gonna get worse, and I had to be off. Could could they run the stream on Thursday? And I actually I'm not saying they couldn't. I'm saying I don't know if they could. That's something I want to check in with them this week. Like if I don't show up, can do you guys know how to run everything? I think they probably do. Oh yeah, I gotta check on that. Seems like a conflict of interest. No, not at all. Um, Matt and I talk about this all the time. Matt's uh. Matt's, um, Matt will probably guide me, like, or, uh, how do I put this? Matt will, will probably keep me from staying too long. But not, like, in, in, in a good way. Like, Matt's not a, um, a self-centered or selfish person. So do you think Matt would... To further your point, it would be Matt would be saying, "Look, you've you've outgrown us, and you know it's it's time for you to move on." He wouldn't necessarily fire you, oh, but no, he no, would no, try never. and no. he, he, push he would out. Me. It's time to think about it. Like he would. We, we, we joked around that um, I, I work for them one day a week to do a campaign or something, and mm -hmm. that that means I'm still an employee. So I get to use all the studios and everything. So it behooves me to stay at one, at one way or another. That's fair. Matt is Obi-Wan and Steve is Luke. Reader. I really saw myself more as a Chewbacca. You are forgetting painting. Yeah, oh, I know. Oh. I talk and I just go. Steve, apparently you're Anakin now. Ooh, the bad one? Well, that guy is like, from, he's from like 15 minutes away from here. <laughs> he's from St. Catharines, right? Uh, I don't know if he's from St. Catharines, but I know that after the trilogy, he started working on his brother's farm up in Dundalk. Oh, yeah? Which That's is about an hour from where I am. Let's find out. 
could use a break from the There's a few work that the super days. famous people from right around me, like um, James Cameron's from 20, sorry, 10 minutes that way. The Alexis on Fire guys are from 15 minutes that way. I went to school with uh, Dead Mouse. He's from Vancouver, Steve. Oh, yeah? Oh, okay. Yeah. I thought he was from St. Catharines. But he attended high school in Markham, Ontario. Well, that's close. That's over here. Yeah. That's an hour away from so me. They must, they must have moved there, like, obviously before he went to high school. I'm using uh, the new contrast uh, Proxigor scales. It's going to look like this when I'm all done. With E, 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 works. Luke had never heard that song before. He thought I was making it up when I said there was a cartoon in the 80s. Colin had the same reaction. Yeah. And then and then we then we listened to the... Okay, so what had better music, everybody? The 1970s The Hobbit movie or the, the 2000s Hobbit movie? That's not fair. No, 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 no. One's a clear winner. And it's the 70s. <laughs> Why? Go ahead. Because, I don't know, it, it, it still holds up. Raccoon's better than Ewoks? Eh, they're both good. Have you used that light gray shader contrast? No, so, um, these are primed Mechanica standard gray, and then they're airbrushed Ulthuan gray. I'm not using any of the contrast primers on these. Oh, I'll grab a, oh. I'll grab some gray sear, and you'll see the color difference. Oh wait, I'm almost done. Let me get this guy's arm done. Hobby from the 70s? Yeah, you haven't seen that movie? It's an animated one, if I recall correctly, yep. yes. Yep. So this is the color the models here are uh, airbrushed with. This is this is the Grace here primer color. This is what I'm using. VHS. Kids these days don't even know what that is. No, it wasn't a show, Matthias. It was a it was a movie, an actual movie. I have never had a problem with eBay, John. How do you? How do you? <laughs> oh, okay. So, um. I actually forgot to, that's not true. I actually just lied. So th this year I ordered a bunch of MDF movement trays, um, which I don't use anymore because I print my own now. Um, and I ordered 300 bucks, th almost 400 bucks worth of MDF movement trays. I ordered a bunch of every size. One size didn't come in. So I messaged the guy I'm like, hey, one size is missing. No response. Wait a few days. Hey man, one size missing, nothing. I put in a ticket, I'm like, hey, I don't know if I'm doing this right, but I'm not, I'm missing one size. And then, like, a week or two after that, eBay refunds the entire price to me. I'm like, ah, not, I, not what I intended. Poor guy lost out on a bunch of money because one thing was forgotten in the box. I never got a response from the guy. That's the LO. It wasn't finished? It was finished. Oh, you mean, like, it's like... Live action recorded and animated overlaid. My Doctor V, my local store has um something wrong or missing or whatever in every order they do from Games Workshop. Isn't that fun? Yeah. Feels like that place is in chaos at the moment or something. 
Should we use potato? Yeah. That's that sucks, Demon Ace. I've heard of that happening quite a fair bit. Oh, really? I never noticed that. I know it's been so long since I watched it. So <clears throat> we were talking about this a bit yesterday. I didn't get a chance to finish it. You know, like I ordered the sorry not ordered. I have the two new horse heresy uh heavy weapon boxes. And I I I bought one because I needed the I wanted ten plasma cannons for my Dark Angels. And then I bought the other one because I wanted ten last cannons for my Dark Angels. So it's good they're good to have, right? But when you buy the last cannons, you get ten Volkite. Do I just do it? I find them so disgustingly dirty. What kind of player are you, Steve? I don't know. You I, casual? I, I bet you if you if you, ind if you independently asked the, for the forty people in chat right now, you'd probably get like thirty different answers. It's fair, but what what do you see yourself as? Well, a casual player, a, a tournament person. player. I'm not not a tournament player. I don't go to tournaments. I am a professional player. I'll tell you this: if this if this means anything, when uh, a few years, a couple years ago, I sold off my, I got tired of the horse heresy arms race. Yeah. Um. People were coming in with like nothing was narrative anymore. Nothing was fluffy. It was just the dirt. It was like everybody had a friend to make or everybody bought phosphix mortars. Everybody bought ten volkite. Like it was the same list, no matter what legion they were playing. Like okay, we're just it's like we're we're at that stage where we all know what the best of the best is now, and that's all we're gonna buy. Um, so I sold off my Iron Warrior army in its entirety, mm -hmm. and I started over and repainted, and I made sure I didn't buy a single thing that could fire Phosphex. Um, I bought no artillery and kept it uh, just a big infantry spam uh, back in when that was that was bad for the edition. That's that's who I am. Now that being said, there have been jokes around here about the arms race starting up again so because um i justify spending too much i paint fast i now have a bunch of phosphex mortars i have a friend maker i have two aquador bombards i can do the full iron fire list i have all the last can i can make that those two dirty last cannon and sniper squads like you, you're never going to see them in a battle report but i i can take my army to um the cheesiest cheese factory you can come up with right now. Mm -hmm. I won't do it, but I'm capable of doing it. So I am okay. both sides of the spectrum. So build them, right? And, you know, if somebody says to you, look, I, I really want to be challenged or I, I really want it so that way playing game that's got the cream of the crop or whatever, then you have them there. But otherwise, you You've got them on hand, but you don't necessarily need to use them. Yeah, that's right? kind of the idea. It just feels like it's something I never would even bother to buy. I find them that dirty, but like you're forced to buy them if you like. Well, not that you're forced. To, I mean, you, kind of, you get three different types of heavy weapons. You get ten of each, right? So you get them. Like, yeah, I buy one, I get. Yeah, I mean, like, often, I we think all know why. On Games Workshop's part, it, it was a smart move on their part, right? Oh, Johnny Payne, it's... I don't chase the meta. I stay ahead of it. I know where it's going, and I'm prepared for it when my community gets to it. I feel like using a 10-man squad of Word Bears, Hellfire Blaster, 15-point Assault 2 Plasma that's pending strength 6. Yeah, that's, that's really good. But, um, Demon Ace, what about a 10-man... I am the meta. What about a... Like... You can come up with a bunch of combos, and like the um, the Sun Eaters, the uh, Iron Havocs, a bunch of things that are crazy good, but point for point, nothing can do better than a 10-man heavy support squad with a Volkite and a Tech Marine. What's worse, if they're Iron Warriors, even better.
Didn't you have to give them a warlord trait to make them the best, though? I wouldn't even bother with that warlord trait in that unit. All they okay. need, all they need, is the tech marine. Because the tech marine, I think the tech marine is actually the biggest problem. But either way, that squad puts out fifty strength six shots with the flag rate a turn. That's too much. There's too many shots. Like the, that weapon should, in my opinion, should have lost the shot, not gained a shot. It used to be heavy four, now it's heavy five. It should have went down to heavy three. Yeah. So that 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 that's the one thing. That's the one weapon I looked at. I'm like, wait, why? Yeah, because because that, that that squad, a uh, demon ace. Um, I'm talking about is 45 inch range, 50 shots, hitting on twos, uh, wounding on twos, deflagrate. If you're playing Dark Angels, you put in um, um, Marduk Cedrus within six of the start of the game, and now they're really ones to hit into wound. You make them Iron Warriors, and now they're plus one strength to strength seven against Eagles and Dreadnoughts. Like they're even dropping Dreadnoughts, even with two of armor save. It, it, it's the Tech Marine that. The Tech Marine is the big problem right now, I think. Because. The tech ring gives them night vision and an omni and a uh, uh, cognitive signal plus one blister skill. Um, ignore night fighting completely, and you can't you can't shroud against them. It's a it's a it's a cheap death squad. I think I just sold a bunch of uh, Volkite boxes for Games Workshop right now. <laughs> I don't play Horror Chair in 40k, but hasn't this edition of Horror Chair just come out? Yeah, it just came out. It needs it, yeah. It's so it, it's been out for a couple of months. How can you need an RDB to dominate? It's not dominate yet. People aren't using it. The, the 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 weapon the weapons for these guys just came out, so I hadn't even seen them yet. But the the the, the mathematics you just crunch the numbers on them. It's too good. So we're just joking about like do I do I assemble a squad of them and paint them up right away for both my armies. Uh, for when everybody else catches up to that and realizes and that we see that constantly. Now it's just who goes first and kills the other heavy weapon squad. Finally got the mechanical book and I'm liking the lightning cannon for them. Yeah, that, their one tank. I'm not liking vehicles currently in this edition. Um, but their one tank I think is pretty awesome. The one that explodes uh, like really far. What don't you like about vehicles? Um, How frail they are? Yeah, they're they're... Okay, name a vehicle uh, that isn't um, a broad, like, isn't an artillery vehicle that you can't get the same firepower out of a dreadnought for drastically cheaper and like seven times the resilience. Dreadnoughts, dreadnoughts yeah. are, I think dreadnoughts are the real problem. Vehicles are a little too weak, you're not too strong, but they do the same role. So dreadnoughts do your heavy firepower far better than vehicles do. The big thing that uh, they don't do comparatively to some vehicles, those they don't transport. True, but it's different. Right. I'm talking about uh, the heavy vehicles. So a Spartan's a Spartan. Everybody needs one. The Kratos, you can uh, for the same. You can you can replicate the Kratos firepower for like half the points in infantry and and dreadnoughts. Yeah. The Kratos is too expensive, and it can be. Remember, it can be one shot by a last cannon. One last cannon is blow it up. It happened with a dreadnought. I picked up a box of each heavy weapon and I have 20 uh, Mark six that I can do. If I want two 10 men or I can split them into smaller. Yeah, see, that's... The the the, the, the sportsman thing to do is to have five-man squads. But yep. I'm going to do 10-man squads and only play them as five men at first and then roll the 10. Keep the bits in the closet. You never know when you'll need them. The only one I don't see much use out of is the multi melta. What brown are these backpacks? These backpacks are my favorite contrast paint. Agro's Dunes. I think it's two layers. It's it's two coats to get that effect. And then here it is. Here's what it looks like after you highlight them with Xandri dust. Nice rich leather look. That's not too dark. I really like it. It's my favorite contrast paint. Thank you, Godzilla. Appreciate that. Okay. 
Back to Peyton. Okay. Oh, I'm paired again. Next is time to gloss things up. I assembled two plasma blasters in my Tartarus squad. I'm excited to use them. Yeah, I like plasma blasters. I like Tartarus Terminators. I think they are the best Terminator in this edition. They're just finally back in stock. Brutal is too good of a rule. I agree. Brutal is too good of a rule. But like, what do you do? Do you just remove it? I don't think you can do that. I guess you can like errata it to uh, a brutal being on a six. The only yeah okay. What about this? On a six to wound with a brutal weapon, it causes two wounds. I, I'd be okay with that. Brutal suit of a rule and the Omega Sakaran for 200 points seems worth it if you're lucky. I have no I have no Omega Sakaran. I don't think it's worth it. Eh, maybe. Interest to know if you're going to paint contrast in the armor for these guys. No, no, no. This is the armor color. These guys are done. I gotta get some tufts on the base, but other than that, these guys are done. But to get them to this stage, all this armor needs is shading and highlighting. So I have to like pin pin wash shade. With a tiny tiny brush into the crevices and then a little bit of uh, white edge highlighting get some where i need them to be oh hell this guy's not even done I've been constantly picking up portraits. She just was really cool. Nightler, the, I, the, Nightlers have some of the best models, my dude. Treat it like ordinance rule. If you make two saves, but still one damage, you fail to save. Would be great to use for oil paints. To... I know. I, I thought about it. If I wasn't pressed for time, I would just oil wash these guys. Oil wash, I find super easy um it's just it's just the the all the wait time in between almost did it i almost did it I mean, listen to, you know what? I don't really listen to music too often anymore. Um, ever since like podcasting became more of a thing, uh, I just listen to that stuff more and more. But I used to like I Godsmack is like my favorite band. So it's like Godsmack, Metallica, Corn, stuff like that. I like me some metal. Got a hair dryer? No, I actually do. Uh, I'm not currently in here, so I just rearranged the studio. But um. Hair hair drying one model at a time uh for the um like the gloss sealer. It just it just I don't know. It didn't seem overly appealing to me. Oh, that's too much.
Oh, Rick, I forgot about the heads. So who is a good... I don't never heard of them. You kids these days, you know, don't know good music. Music was good in the 90s. That's fair enough. Power Rangers is some good TV, I'll tell you. Excuse me. <clears throat> this step is actually pretty quick per model, but it's the most tedious. Am I in serious mode? I, I can I can leave it. Wait, hold on. Are you implying that you think that I'm not actually gonna make that Kickstarter? Who's saying we're not doing that? No, um, Flamboy Hero is saying Steve is entering, um, serious mode. But that means like that that that's implying that that whole preparing the greatest series ever was not serious. That was serious mode. This is back to work mode. <clears throat> oh, fair enough, fair enough, fair enough. I'm actually a little upset right now because I forgot to factor in the heads. In my timeline. The movie I watched yesterday, um, The Pyramid, Disney Plus wouldn't stop recommending it to me. Like, whatever, I'll watch it. You want me to watch it? I'll watch it. Terrible movie. What is that about? What do they gain from recommending bad movies? What movie was it? The Pyramid. Like, if, if I watched it in the 90s, I'd have been, yeah, cool, whatever. It's one of them, like, second-tier horror movies. But, like, recommending this movie being made now, I'm like, why? Like, why are you doing this to me? Here's a question. When you watch movies, do you watch the latest film or do you like to go watch older ones? Uh both. Because when I right. yeah, it's on Disney. Um That's... so um I guess technically I watch older stuff more because I'll put it on and then paint. Something that I've seen before. That's why then. That's why. Because if it's if your habits are that you're like watching older stuff, 
then what it's doing is it's picking up on those habits. So that's why I would recommend an older film. It's not going to care about the rating. It's going to care about the genre and the age of the film. Okay. That's why I ask these dumb questions. User data? Yeah. Yes, but I don't think I've watched a horror movie on Disney+. Plus. Have you watched a horror movie on any streaming service? Oh, yeah. Right, and they never share this information amongst themselves. <laughs> I gotta believe they don't. There's no incentive to. Sure there is. No, like, we're basically in a streaming war, right? Like, everybody's trying to get... We, we are. We are <laughs> certainly in a streaming war, but at the same time, too, let's say Disney's got... I, I'm just... This is theory crafting. I don't really pay a whole lot of attention to the patterns. But let's say Disney has got the um, the Underworld series. And let's say Amazon Prime has got... Um, oh, damn it. Resident Evil series. Okay? So they're exclusive to the two contents. They're going to want a data mine, and they're going to want to know what it is that you like to watch because they will have something that they can advertise to you that is right up your alley. And then you'll be incentivized to join their streaming service because they're the only ones that have Resident Evil or Underworld. And you'll want to subscribe to them just so you can watch that. And then, while they're still in a, in a streaming group because you know, they're both wanting money from you, you're paying both of them. So While they're in a war, the, the war isn't necessarily amongst them themselves it's with you yeah but i just i've given up i i i am i am france in this war everybody's taking a little bit i'm happy to pay every i'm just gonna gloss over that what take a little bit of france come on they get their ass saved in two major world wars i'm sorry friends if any french viewers are here my analytics say you're not watching, so. Work is potato, have to go. Later, Dr. V, have a good one. I'll keep the channel safe while you're gone. Speaking of data mining, last stream you were talking about the great Super Nintendo RPGs. Next time I loaded YouTube, my top recommendation was about the best RPGs. That's awesome. <laughs> They're listening, man. You gotta be careful what you say. I wish that was true, though. I wish the phones were listening. So you don't believe they are? Shit, there's not done either. No, they're not. They're, they're not. Well, so not, 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 not to the, not to the joke that we talk about. We talk about things and uh, we see them in our advertisement feed. It would, it would require way too much data processing and data power or processing power. Um, what's what it is is we're seeing an ad or whatever, and then we're talking about it, and then we notice it the next time we see it. It's like when you buy a new car, right? Or whatever, and then you, all of a sudden you see those cars everywhere. It's just that you're noticing it now. That's all it is. You were thinking about the uh, Nintendo RPGs. So now you noticed it in the feed. Now, there will be a time when the phones can actually keep track of everything. I can't see why that wouldn't happen, but it's not happening now. How did they leak it already there, Spoons? Oh, come on. Dang it. First to market, man. This is, always happens. If there, if, I swear to Christ, if there is one... 
Moon Wall. I forgot the name of my own. I remember, so I think I should take over. <laughs> the Moon Wall. Misunderstanding. Wait. Aren't you still lucky? I, I swear. I will be upset if I remember to be. Happen there. As much day they have at what trips I need to run my coaster, that's fair. Wouldn't wouldn't uh fight you on that. Algorithm or hair toss, he's on. See, yeah, it's, that I believe. I do believe in Algorithmo in his power. Found my buddy he has full armies for Hiles, Dwarves, Orcs, and Goblins for edition. Gonna scratch that fancy game while waiting for the old world. That that's awesome. You have all the best armies right there. Yeah. Hiles, Dwarves, Orcs, and Goblins. I, there's no, there isn't. There's no Dark Elves. You don't need no Dark Elves. Shut up, you don't know. What Mediocre you're about. army at best. Come over here and say that to my face, Steven. If I knew where there was, I would. No, you wouldn't. You're too busy. And lazy. Don't forget lazy. That's also true. What has been your favorite mini army narrative that has been released? Um, okay, I actually know the answer to this. Um, there's two that I think are my favorites. They're they're not tied, but I love them differently. One was the Fate of Fayum, for obvious reasons. It was the first. It's the most memorable. I had a freaking blast doing it. We were just, like, Matt did all the work, but we were just, like, making it up as we go. Uh, we're just two guys having fun. I have to take a stab at the second one. Um, The Dark Angel campaign that happened last year. That's what I thought. It, I just, I just really enjoyed it. <laughs> I mean, it's it's my it's my main faction. Uh, then again, I think orcs are my main. Yeah, orcs are my main faction now. But I love the Dark Angel um, lore in my campaign. That that campaign dealt with it to a great deal. But like, I've I've done so many campaigns, and I've loved. I don't think I've done a bad one. Like, sorry, I don't. I think I've done one that I didn't like. What's up, Nico? You're questioning my... I feel like you're about to question my uh, choices there. Really hoping for some old world news. I don't think we're seeing old world news for some time. <laughs> World War Warhammer just keeps building that up. I know. I think I think Games Workshop uh, kind of backed themselves into a bit of a thing with Ninth Edition, and they need to focus on getting out of that first. <laughs> the thing I think the safe bet is Tenth Edition next year, and then the Old World the year after. Now I'll be clear. I don't know. But that's what I would bet money on. Yogmir and Tor I had a lot of fun with as well. Um, okay, but there was one campaign. I can't remember which campaign it was. We um the the the, the finale it was the campaign with um the very first campaign with the um Enslavers. Does anybody know what that one was called? I think it's Death Watch Augustine's Station. The finale of that episode was the single greatest gaming experience of my life. Augustine Station, was that the second Death Watch campaign? Potentially. <clears throat> There's so many, I can't remember these things anymore.
Yeah, uh, strong rumors for Blood Angels and it's the 10th box. I hope it's... I hope it's true. Are you off work in 10 minutes, Spoons? Oh, shoot, it's getting late. Ah! If I seal these by 6, I'll be fine. Oh, I'm gonna be fine. I'll, I'll, get, these done. I'll get these done. Yeah, after I seal these is when I do all the metals. I'm, I'm not going to do the gun cases white anymore. It'll take too much time. I want to see World Leader and Imperial Guard, either Christmas or 10th. I think you'll see both of those soon. Speaking of campaigns, what was the decision not to use uh, Chaos Cultists in the Space Cops campaign? Um, what do you mean? We did. Oh, neither one of us put any actual Chaos Cultists in our lists, actually. You're right. Yeah, I guess we didn't. Sometimes we do things, frickin' peanuts. And frickin' peanuts, I have no idea how we come to many of our decisions. Does that answer your question, frickin' peanuts? I like saying your name, frickin' peanuts. Huh. Oh no. You know what I done did? There's a chance. There's a chance I threw away the heads for these guys. <coughs> nope. Nope, they're right here. <sighs> Forty heads. Angle primal. Twenty heads on that one. It's true. No, I I know enough people who have pre-ordered this box set that somebody would have spare heads if I actually didn't use these. Because you have you have um enough to put everybody helmeted or closed, domed or open. Where do you look? Where do you recommend looking for carrying cases for armies? Okay, I have an interesting take on this. I don't use carrying cases. However, um, if I'm going on a plane, I think the, the Citadel ones, the Games Workshop ones, actually are pretty good. Uh, if you have all the money in the world, which none of us do, um, there's the battle foam and get everything custom cut. Um, but I put everything in cardboard boxes on a shelf, so I'm not the, I'm not the carrying case guy to ask. Weirdly enough. But like, if you're looking to store them under your bed or something like that, go, <laughs> go buy a, um, um, 
So I recently packed up all my Dark Angels, my Firstborn. I don't really play Firstborn anymore. So I, I went to Walmart and bought a bunch of um, Rubbermaid containers, like the, the big square ones that are only about this high. And then I bought a, a rolled up mat a foam mattress stopper. And I just cut out a square, the, the size of the case, laid it down, laid down a row of miniatures, cut another square, laid it down, laid down a row of miniatures, and that was, it was dirt cheap. They make crazy plug foam cases for expensive cameras and stuff. Yeah, you can also buy that, like a Pelican case. But that, Pelican cases are probably more expensive than Battle I would think. I, I have a couple of my cameras. Well, somebody will write, uh, Mark, somebody will probably end up writing uh, fan rules to play these in Horus Heresy. Like, Games Workshop themselves should put out a um, create your own Xenos book so you can play your Eldar, your Orcs, your Dwarfs, your Tau in Heresy. Because if they don't, the, the community will. Yeah, chat, man, that works too. Um, if, you buy, if you buy a good Gorilla Tape, that'll work. Okay, I'm going to be back. I have to go prime these. I'll be back in the turnaround side. I'll be back in like 30 seconds. What 7th edition guys do you want to see ported over cap on? Like, what do you mean? Be like the old armies? We need a book for our shit that's about the Great Crusade. Yeah, I could get behind exactly that. I, I think they're going to go to the, like, they're going to go to the scouring first. And you never know where they take it. Maybe they can bring them all in during the scouring. But I guess the Great Crusade is where they would have ran into all these guys, for the most part. I guess except for the Tyranids.
Stand up straight. The community project will be adding Elder Orcs soonish. Is there? Is there? A, is there? Um. Is there a um an, a project already started? Panoptica? I haven't heard of it. You want to see the beast? Beast, he's, a, he's an orc, right? Oh. It's a huge project. They have released a community FAQ errata already. Interesting. Can you link it in chat? I want to look at it right now. Oh, gotcha. Ooh, uh, Jelly Boss. I have no idea. I got no idea. And I'm not going to think about it until Wednesday. That's when I do my army showcase recordings. I, I've got the point where I try not to think about things because, like, like that. Because Luca will say something like, "Today you want to try this?" After I put up like a bunch of armies, or. After I built a bunch of lists on my balance, I'm like, yeah, we'll try that. And I just wasted a bunch of time trying to figure out what we're going to do. Wait, what do you, what do you mean? What do you miss, Demon Ace? Should I do goats? I, I should probably do orcs. Oh no, I probably shouldn't do one that I want to modify. Ed, you with me? Is Thursday going to be whack? Uh, you know what? Actually, the answer to that is I don't know. I'll explain in two seconds. During the time of the live stream, you forgot to pre-record the army showcase. You zoomed in and did a live. Oh, you, you, you like it that way more? Interesting. That is the easiest thing for us to do. <laughs> that is the least amount of effort. If everybody liked that more, if that was the best thing to do, that actually makes my job easier. So, um... No, that's not going to help. I'm still going to forget. <laughs> so, I have a guest coming in uh, this week. I think he's actually already here. Um, he, months ago, he booked, uh, to come in and play Warhammer Armies Project. And then, like, like, he booked a long time ago. And then, uh, I saw on the schedule, Armies Project, no, 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 I don't do that anymore. I can't play multiple systems. If I'm recording, if I'm recording 8th for my channel... I only record eight for mini wargaming. If I'm recording WAP for my channel, I only record WAP for mini wargaming. So I got to do record multiple game systems that are like the same edition, really. Um, so like Josh was like, okay, yeah, I'll, I'll contact the guy, and let him know, see what he says, and the guy's like, yeah, don't worry, I'll play eight. So he switches to eight, 
And now I gotta tell them we discussed going back to WAP. So I'll leave it up to him. So uh, I, I'm playing him on two. I'm playing it on Wednesday. So whichever game I play on Wednesday, I'll be I'll be playing the same system on Thursday. If he wants to play WAP on Wednesday, we'll play WAP on Thursday. If he wants to play eighth on Wednesday, I'll let him play eighth on Thursday because I'm also playing him during the day for the same game system. So I'm playing this guy during the day, uh, Wednesday and Thursday for a fantasy. Yeah, it's still on. Boons. Oh, I, I, I'm not done. <laughs> I'm not. I can't turn this off until I'm done. The Libra Panoptic is FPQ rather than Libra. More units. But yeah, do you have a link? Or just tell me what to Google. Because I'm curious as how. How are. Um, What's the FAQ? Like, do you, do you guys, the FAQ? I'm doing it right now, Paul. Um, do, do you allow vehicles to shroud? Sorry. To evade. Um, at what point do you roll your penny check? In that FAQ. This is non oil. It's gloss non oil, so it, it flows better. I'm gonna be um I'm gonna be sealing these guys. Uh, a satin sealer will take the sheen off the gloss. Uh, I think you can link it. You should be able to link it. If YouTube won't let you link it, there's nothing I can do. Yeah, I'll definitely have this this FAQ a reading. I might put that um into implementation. Like use it here. As long as I don't find any bias FAQs. Which I tend to find the case with fan made stuff. Doesn't like the link. Ah, okay. Um, what do I Google? Let's go to Google. I am three guys away from being done and ready to Google. Oh, that's actually actually a better idea. Right, I don't know if they're going to anymore, actually. I don't know. Unless they're waiting to put out all their books and then they're going to do it. 
I wonder if they just don't care. I wonder if there's just no upside for them to putting it out. All right, what we got here? I open up a link that takes me to. Oh, to... I want to go to the pages or the spreads. I don't know what this is. Um, Cap on, yeah, I think I think they're interesting. I don't know if I'll even bother using that unit. I think it's more of a narrative thing than uh like you can replicate what that unit does for without using that unit. I don't know, I just I haven't found it overly interesting pages. Wish there would FAQ bikes to be not. I don't, I don't think they need to be cap on. I think, um, I think you gotta hide behind terrain more. I think, I think they're, I think they were just too resilient before. I could be wrong. I think they have the mobility to hide. How many pages is this thing? Acknowledgements, forward, content. Are you sick to make a video? Oh, this one. Oh, not there. All right, so we're taking a look at some fan-made horse heresy FAQs. What's this thing called? The Lieber Panoptica? Am I pronouncing that correctly? They find it cool that 100 points crack and throw out plus one with skill and you... Yeah, no, then... Oh, it's only 130 points? I thought they were over two. That's interesting. Okay, this is FAQ. Let's look at this FAQ. Um... Order of operations and special rules. Special rules overlap. Two wound rules and special rules. Okay, the order of operations and saves. When wounds are dealt to a unit, whether by shooting or melee, these wounds are treated as a wound pool. Each of these wounds must be fully resolved before a player can move on to another pool. In order of operations around these pools is not laid out clearly. Okay, I think we are. We all kind of play it that way, but they're kind of laying it out. But in, in that spot, it didn't address whether or not you take your routed if you evade or not yet. Does that get? Does it um, address that later on in this uh, FAQ, Ed? The following the enemy. Oh, there's an, there's an errata here saying any reactions made in the opponent's move phase cannot be used to embark or disembark upon a vehicle. I never would have attempted or thought of doing that. Were people trying that? Or were people doing that? So replace the second sentence in the reactions in the shooting phase first paragraph read as follows. Once the active player has resolved all the hit and two wound rolls and saving throws of any kind are made, but before any damage mitigation rolls are made or casualties removed, the reactive player may choose to expend one of the reactions for that phase to have the unit targeted by a shooting attack either return fire or evade. 
It doesn't help us with that current problem. But it doesn't it doesn't tell you that doesn't clear out clear up whether or not you pin first. It removes the wound word that causes the current problem. Does it? Replace the second sensor. After that clear uh, has rolled to hit into wound rolls and saving throws of any kind are made. But before any damage mitigation rolls are made. Oh, casualties removed. Isn't it almost exactly the same? I wish I had a rule book here. Oh, no, okay, gotcha. Not that bit. Okay, does it address that? It means that you need to get free. Yeah, really oh, doesn't that take you about the. Um, Augury scanner doesn't need to be there. I mean, you can't argue that you can intercept the Augury scanner and then make another reaction. Who is the Dreadnought Errata? In addition, any ability that replaces a shooting attack, such as Battlesmith Special Rule or Psychic Power, only replaces a single shooting attack. The Dreadnought might still fire other weapons as normal. No. See, now I can't use this. I can't use this. But that's a that's a big errata that, like, I'm okay if we're making fan made, or sorry, uh, community fixes to the game. But that's a rat thing. That's somebody wrote this, decided that um, you should be able to do a psychic power with your dreadnought and fire your twin last cannon. When clearly the rules say it's one or the other. Oh. I just got a notification saying my OBS disconnected and then reconnected. Am I still here? You're still here. I still look okay. Yeah, okay. Damn, I was, I was looking forward to this. That Honestly, that alone is enough to be like, no, I'm not doing it. Unless I'm missing something that it was kind of ambiguous, that that's what they kind of meant in the core rules. It did, but I'm back. Ooh. Heavy. Characters in wound allocation. Once a model of the character subtype has suffered an unsaved wound, all remaining wounds in the current wound pool must continue to be allocated to the same model. And may not choose to have these wounds allocated elsewhere. Nah. Yeah, it's, it's, it's rewriting in the game. Subsequent wound pools are not affected by this. Yeah. I mean, personally, I think that's a positive change. But now it's rewriting the game. I'm actually unable to use this. I could not use this FAQ as a battle report producer because whether I, I believe that's a positive change for the game, but um, some other viewer watching a battle report being like, why are you doing that? Like, what? that's not the rule. Oh, you're just changing the game. I, I actually can't use any of this. So I'm going to actually stop reading this, which is unfortunate. No, no, I do want to know how they interpret the uh, pinning thing. You know what the pinning thing is in here? Uh, um, bunkers here infiltrate GB has been reading it though which is yeah I know for sure for sure oh see even even this night vision even this night vision errata I like uh, the one in this book says um, replace the rule, blah, blah, blah. A unit that contains at least one model with this special rule ignores the effects of night fighting. That's the same. And no model may take shrouded rules to negate wounds or hull points inflicted by their attacks. I th I'm, that's actually exactly the same, but I'm assuming you mean their attacks as the model who has night vision? Wait, this FAQ needs an FAQ. 
There's a rat in these FAQ. Is that what they mean? Never mind. I, I actually don't know what they're trying to say there. But my first interpretation of the yeah, action get behind that change. A unit making use of the interceptor advanced reaction may choose to use it to react to a zooming flyer entering play. The reason for this is that the event which has triggered the reaction to the flyer entering play, not its movement, meaning interceptor can still be active. Okay, so currently in the game, you can't use interceptor against zooming flyers. Um, some people believe it's because they miss it. It's the way the rules are written. You're not able to do it. Um, but I, I strongly believe, I can't know for sure, that they actually intended flyers not to be intercepted. Like they're going so fast, you can't be ready on the ground. Pop. I'm pretty sure that's the intent. So that's another just uh, game, state of the game change. Order of operation reserves, performing a deep strike balance change. Uh, so nothing about the nothing about the most egregious problem for me. I'm gonna go back to the top and check it again. Because every time I do a battery report and I say, "Hey, this is how we handle it," I know some people disagree and uh, disagree with our interpretation. And there's always at least one comment that says, "You're a fool." Clearly, this is how you're supposed to handle it. And I'm like, like I understand that argument, but no side can argue definitively that their their version is the correct uh, interpretation because neither one works out to full resolution special rules overlap maybe it's under that it's plot to distract steve from painting to extend the stream has worked oh I'll be, hey I'm gonna, be, I'm gonna be here uh I'm, I'm pretty good i'm pretty good i'm about to do the heads and then after I glue the heads on, I have to seal the miniatures. Uh, and then I'm going to do all the final la layers and metals and all that stuff. As long as I seal the miniatures by 6 p.m., that's an hour and 40 minutes, we're good. I am now I am now ahead of schedule. <laughs> um, occasionally, a weapon will have multiple special rules. Okay, that's not going to help. Order of operation saves. Okay. When wounds are dealt to a unit, whether by shooting or melee attacks, these wounds are treated as a wound pool. Each of these wound pools must be fully resolved before a player can move on to another pool. That's how we are kind of already play the game, but good for putting it out there. Uh, the order of operations around these pools is not laid out clearly in a single place. Agreed. <laughs> but instead spread through several areas of the core rulebook. Agreed. Like everything else. As per the example below from page 166, wound, uh, allocate wounds and remove casualties. Allocate wounds, take saves, take damage mitigation rolls, remove casualties from play. Yeah, that's not. Order of operations, saves continued. Any reactions are made in response to shooting attack or between steps. When allocating wounds from a pool, the controller player may allocate wounds as per normal rules for doing so. Fast ice usually means, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, once the pool is empty, Hello, hello. Hello? Who's spoons. this? Yeah, spoons. Yeah, Spoons. Spoons? All right, I think I got a boost to you sound quiet. It's Barry. All right, Spoons, right. say something for me. Testing. Is Spoons on the same uh, audio level as the rest of us guys? Let me boost you a little bit more. Oh, shoot. Oh crap, I gotta go. <sighs> I missed four texts from my mom who needs a ride. Um <laughs> I I I'm gonna go pick her up and uh I'll be back. It probably won't take me more than ten minutes to drop her off. There you go. All right.